here. That's not gonna be it. Uh, then we need. Interesting, interesting. Oh, here we go. Test, test. Let's see. Let's see. Where's our mic? No. What's going on here? Am I plugged in? What are we plugged in over here? All right, hold on, everybody. We got technical difficulties. Let me unplug and plug back in. Testing. Nope. All right. Uh, can you guys hear me? Because uh, I couldn't hear earlier. All right, hold on. We got music's fine. I can see the music. What I can't see is the microphone. Because it looks like it looks like what's picking up is not this. Oh, maybe it is. Why is this so confusing? Oh, I found it. I plugged this in. There we go. All right, hold on. Hold on, now we should be... Where's external? Where's external microphone? I can't tell. I can't tell if this is the right mic. <laughs> um, okay, well, that was fun. Uh, good way to start a stream, huh? How's everybody doing? Uh, happy Wednesday to everybody. Um... Hopefully, whatever mic is currently plugged in is going to be fine. It looks fine on my bars over there, but it should be this. Can you guys hear me thumping like this? Can you guys hear that thumping? I mean, I want it to be the lapel because you're going to hear, like, all sorts of other noises. Uh, no thumping. Okay, okay, okay. All right, I want to fix it. I want to fix it. Hold on. So, it was plugged in to the wrong... Uh, area before I started the stream, but now it should be here. And for some reason, I can no longer pick external microphone, which is weird. Uh, okay, yeah, right now it's actually picking up the camera's microphone. Let's see. Yeah, that's the camera. That's the camera's mic. Uh, let me do. Let's try. How about this? You guys hear those? You guys hear that thump? I can't, I can't tell. <laughs> Sounds like music, but distorted. Yeah, the music should uh, should be playing through a different, better. Yep, you broke the camera now. Uh oh. Maybe. There you go. This is it. Can you guys hear this like a heartbeat? Because it will cancel out some of the noise. Mic is working. Okay. No thumping. I don't know. I don't know. I broke everything. And I can't just, like, restart the stream either. So we'll keep going. If you guys hear either not enough or too much, let me know, and I'll try to figure it out. Uh, I usually try to use this DJI mic because the audio is just so amazingly clear. Uh, when I go back to replay anything or to, um, you know, download the stream and then replay something, it's so clear. Whereas if I use any of my other mics, uh, it just sounds like mud. And it's, like, not worth it. Uh, I kind of want it to at least be, like, a decent production, you know? Um, anyway, today we're going to continue the Micron build. There's a bunch of exciting things going on. Uh, one of which isn't related to 3D printing, but it's related to me and so forth. And because of that, it's related to the channel. Uh, this is my latest board game. I just got it in today. This is a German copy of Grease Monkey Garage. I have been working and designing this game for eight years now. Uh, and I just got my hands on it. So I know it might not seem much, but it's extremely exciting for me, considering the game is older than my kid. Um, but yeah, this is a, it's a game, it's a board game. It's a family weight game uh, in which you run a busy auto repair shop. So cars come into the shop, they require different parts. You have a worker uh, slash workers that you go around the shop collecting different materials to fix the cars to get 
uh, victory points. So it's a really simple game in that sense, but its trick is that there is a shared worker. So you're kind of sending him around the shop in different various areas. Um, and he shared because you're a manager and you know when your shift ends the other people pick up But I just kind of wanted to show it off before it's in retail um, To uh, in the US at least it's already available in German uh, in Germany uh, But yeah, you're uh, They're double-sided components. So you can mix the board up in various ways uh, So the gameplay is different every time uh, Here's some of the cars uh, All the art uh, was done by me. So the design the art uh, illustration, graphic design, all that stuff. Rules, uh, obviously published by uh, Game Circus, um, and all the all the resources are awesome wood pieces. And here are your the custom meeples that are painted over as well. You have your custom workers. These are girls that hold wrenches. They're your specialists. And then the shop worker is just a little dude with a wrench or a screwdriver rather. So fun little game. Like I said, I've been working on it for many, many, many moons. I haven't even had a chance to fully unbox this and check it out yet. Uh, but just wanted to share for those that follow me and follow the channel. Should be a cool one. Um, pretty excited about it. This was actually the only piece of art that I didn't do. This was painted by, uh, I actually don't remember his full name, but the credits are in the booklet for him. I just had to redo some of this to make it look a little bit more appropriate and to rearrange her but other otherwise it's uh yeah it's all done by me so we'll put that somewhere over there not important but uh i would talk about it uh hey let me say hi to everybody by the way that's in here you know as always i appreciate you guys being in here uh so let me pay my respect i saw jeff was in here and, and tiger flyer way early so hey to you guys first what's going on uh we got gryfang in here iceman um one eye willy nigel nuno reds 3d rodolfo rafa uh martin uh bb's bb's 3d uh let's see let's see what other names we got what other names uh john larue is in here adrian adrian uh eager is in here from russia what's up eager здравствуйте uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, Timor, we got... Okay, now I can look on this side. The whole much significantly larger text. Uh, Spinoit. Wow, that's a cool name. Will Moore, what's going on? Hypermotor Racing, yo, 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 yo. Uh, alright guys, as always, right here, right there, there should be a pinned comment. If you guys click on that comment, it should take you to a Gleam.io link that looks like this. Uh, here, all you have to do is fill out your info. Make sure you answer this question. You have to be in the United States, and you have to be present for the drawing. There's about two hours left in the stream. Uh, so towards the end of the stream, uh, we'll pick a winner. You can win yourself a chance to win a, PLA, a roll of PLA Plus by 3D Max. Wow, that was a tongue twister for me today for some reason. Uh, so go ahead and check that link out for sure. And I'll be checking in to see how many people entered. Looks like we have five people in here. So, you know, the chances to win are pretty high. And, and repeats are okay. If you guys are in here supporting me, I don't mind if the same person wins. Um, otherwise, we have uh, another thing I want to share. Shop.3dprintsos. Uh, these are all things that I've been designing and working on. Some cool, fun shirts to wear. Uh, and they're the cheapest possible price I could put on here. It's $16, which is just... You know, it's literally, I don't I don't make any money off of it, but I think it's cool to be able to get something in return if you guys want to support uh, the channel. There's there's hoodies, there's shirts, there's lots of different merch. There's uh, um, these work mats in various colors, uh, all uh, different hot ends that I illustrated. There's uh, these mugs, hot ends mug. Uh, speaking of mugs. Here's. Um, yeah, so check that out. That should be uh, shop.3dprintsos.com. Uh, other than that, we have some building to do. Uh, and the only thing that I've done so far is just set up some of the hardware uh, as I do. Oh, that's why this looks so weird. It's still zoomed in from the last stream. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that, that looks a little better. Yeah, so I have... 
all of my hardware laid out with the labels out in case I need something. It's all right there. Uh, this little thing I printed on the brand new um, Chitty Tech Q1 Pro that I've been testing for, I guess, a little over a month and a half, two months. Um, it's a little print and place Jeep slash Defender. And I think this model is awesome. It's a $2 model from Colts. Uh, I don't remember the designer's name, but he has a bunch of other models. And I bought another one today. It's like a trophy truck. That's just a beautiful model to print. I actually need to remember uh, to bring uh, some kind of fun filament to the office so that I can print it. Because uh, I, I only have uh, pretty standard colors in there. But yeah, I just can't believe this thing prints, uh, you know, just willy-nilly here. And it has like faux suspension. Um, it's just a clever design. I kind of wanted to just highlight it. It's so cool. Uh, anyway, uh, that machine is actually really cool. Um, and I haven't been able to talk about it. Um, but it's, it's, it's been a, it's been an interesting experience with the machine. I haven't had to do a single thing, which is pretty rare. Uh, even machines, uh, most machines require some kind of input here and there, but this thing just, it's completely hands off. It prints amazing and, uh, it has a heater in it so you can print hot filaments with no issues. And the, the price is, is quite low. Um, so yeah, let me know if you guys are interested in, in that machine. I'll send you guys a link because that would also help the channel. Uh, I just saw Zoomies in here. Hey, Zoomie, how you doing? You have the mug, but do you have the glass? Um, I do. I do. No ice this time. We're going, we're going neat today. Cheers again. I'm going to be painting while I watch. Nice. Keep my eye on y'all. <laughs> I'm assembling trying not to glue my fingers together. Let me do a test. Okay. Can you get it? No, I don't think I don't think this mic is on. Actually, hold on. If I turn around and whisper, can you guys hear this? That's some ASMR stuff right there. Did you guys hear that? Because I guess that could still be picking up. Alright, we're gonna do a test. No. No, yep, nope. How about now? How about now? Is this audio working? No. Okay. All right. And all right, is it working now? Yes, yes. Oh, okay, hold on. I need to slow down because there's a delay. Just barely. All right. I have a feeling that the microphone is no longer working. Just a bummer. All right, I'm going to do one last test before we get started, because if we're going to do two hours of stream, I want there to be good audio, okay? Uh, definitely not coming from the phone. Okay. All right, let me do this. Let's try this one. This one, from what I understand, should be my computer. I can test that by tapping here. Yeah, that's the computer. Uh, for some reason, and I've never seen this before, but it's not showing up. It's not showing up um, on my side of things over there. Let's try this. Default. Oh, let's see. Test. 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 Okay, here we go. Can't tell. Can't tell. Talking? No. No, I don't think so. Test, test, test. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. If it's working well enough, I guess I'll continue, but I'm genuinely, genuinely bummed about that. First issue so far that I've ever had with, with the mic setup. Okay, it is what it is. Um, 
You're going to not like the bamboo as much now. Seems like Chitty is 95% of the way of being bamboo. I don't think uh, you'd want that any more, uh, any more bamboo than that. Um, John, I don't. I have the bamboo not to convince me to like the bamboo. I have the bamboo so that I have first-hand experience. So that when people ask me questions, I'll be able to answer them from experience and not just from hearsay. That's that's the reason. I know what you're saying. Um, and yeah, I do I do agree. Uh, Chitty Tech has has really kicked it up ever since uh, this series of their printers, uh, the X series. But this Q1 machine is something else. They really need to make a bigger one. Like definitely, uh, 250 is just not quite big enough. They need it needs to be 300 or 350. Um, but yeah, I think they, they tested the formula with these machines, especially the second version of these machines, and they continued down that path. And it looks like there is like, there's, there's room to grow with this machine. Um, and, uh, I just, I just wish they did an AMS and every time I ask, they say no. Uh, yes, but not very loud when you're all, all the way back. See, that's the problem. That means it's not actually using the lapel mic, because otherwise it would be just as loud over there as over here. It is what it is. Hey, are you going to do a review video? Yes, I am working on a video now. Well, I haven't started with the video, but I've been testing the machine. Uh, it was supposed to be out today, because today was their, like, launch date, but I need more time. Uh, I don't think, uh, you know, two months is enough, and, uh, I actually asked them to send me their new filament that they just that came out like two days ago or three days ago. Uh, and I want to print something with it uh, for the video. Uh, so it's going to delay uh, that review. But I've had it in my office for a while now. I've actually finally started posting photos of it in the office. Uh, so I've been printing with it. My business partner has been printing with it. It's been pretty good. Uh, when they make a Q1 XL, that's going to be hard not to go. Oh, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. It's just going to be another fantastic option. Yeah. Uh, the computer mic's pretty, picking up pretty good. No, it's still the camera mic. Dang it. You think the Q1 Pro hot end stuff will uh, be able to put on... Put, will, do you think the Q1 Pro hot end stuff will be able to be put on the Q3 stuff? Uh, I, I, it actually doesn't do, it doesn't have anything to do with the hot end. Uh, the hot end isn't unique in that way. It has, uh, two, uh, actually it has all four sensors on the bed, uh, load sensors, just like the K machines or any of the more recent, uh, printers. Uh, so it has a clean, like a nozzle cleaner in the back and you guys will see it in the video. It moves back and forth, cleans the nozzle, and then it pushes on the, uh, the build plate itself. And that's how it gets its auto Z offset. So that's it. That's not the hot end. It's the the bed. Uh, and yeah, you should technically be able to put load cells on any machine, on any clipper machine. Why does the giveaway Why does the giveaway say I entered it nine times? And then it's not, <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure, Timor. I doubt that you're innocent. See, Gryfang knows. I already got paint in my hair too soon. That is a shaking trident back there. Yeah, yeah, the trident, uh, the, the table does does go crazy, but it doesn't affect quality. Which, uh, you know, when the print is done, I'll show you. What that is, is uh, it's another another case uh, for my uh, now obsessive uh, macro that I've built. I actually dropped this thing today. Um, and this side, that has tape on it right now, uh, broke uh, the stud off of the front, so I, I need a new one. Uh, so I'm printing a new one. Now I've obviously been really addicted to those things. I use horse milk to dilute my paints. <laughs> That's ridiculous. What a ridiculous statement. <laughs> That's nuts. Now that's really custom. Yeah, there's a lot of custom. There's a lot of custom in my life. Um, all right. Should I try one last time with the microphone? I don't even know. I don't know anymore. One thing I did want to do is turn it off and on. Not the stream or anything. The microphone. All right, I'm going to give it one more go. Let's see. What's the worst that can happen? All right, so now the mic is completely off. So we can 100% know that it's not working because it's right here in my hands 
All right, I'm gonna plug this into out where it belongs. The gray part goes into my laptop. Let's go. I have a feeling it's gonna be a no-go, but let's see what happens. This one is on and communicating. All right, let's see if it pops up magically as something else. External microphone, let's see. Test. That's it, I, I can tell already. So I should be, you guys should be able to hear me exactly the same way from way over here, right? Oh yeah, I can see it peeking from all the way over here. Nice, we did it. We did it, fam. We fixed the microphone. It's like I'm in IT again. <laughs> Dumping. <laughs> what, what, what kind of stream is this when uh, <laughs> there's just people in the chat going thumping and everyone's really excited. We're cheering for thumping. <laughs> nice. The last time someone was cheering for thumping was uh, during that rescue mission at the Titanic submarine. Is that too soon? I don't know. Unplug and replug. That's the classic, Jeff. It's a classic. Um, I heard a piece of hardware fall over here. I know what it is. And I need it. That's why I came over here. All right. Um, all right. Let's get let's get this going. So, <laughs> I about to spin my drink. <laughs> Not too soon, it's just bad. <laughs> that means it's good. Uh, that's good stuff. All right. Uh, should I flip this all the way over? Let's flip it all the way over. <laughs> hey, F1, what's up? Uh, okay, DIN rails. DIN rail mounts just slide over the DIN rails like so. Did I ever print the DIN rail mounts? Uh, Flyer, are you in here? I saw you earlier, but I haven't seen you. Let me know if you're in here. I want to show you the, um, the carbon, ASA carbon print. Also, I'm printing those exact same settings if you are here right now on that machine. It's just not the carbon fiber filament, but it's the same settings that I use. Yeah, I think, I don't think I printed the DIN rail mounts. Not a big deal. Oh, no, I see one. And if there's one, there's more. All right, two, three, and four. Okay, cool. You guys see that Chitty Tech has a new printer out? Yes, F1, we were just talking about it. I, I've had one for, I guess, about two months. Somewhere there, a month and a half. I think two months. Um, I did a, I, I've been posting a bunch of little things here and there. It's some little tweezer, tweezers, little teasers, shorts. Uh, I printed this on it, uh, just earlier today. Uh, it's, it's quite, it's quite the machine. Um, and I'm not sure, like, it's, it's so good that you have to be careful about talking about it because it, it will, it's, it's going to sound like you're shilling for it. So, are you sure the farmer isn't in the? <laughs> it is the farmer isn't the, in the Dell. Oh, a farmer like. Wait, did I miss something? That went over. Is that a fifteen fifteen frame? Yes, it is. It's a little guy. Filter. What's going on? Filter. Uh, they taught us the song, not the meaning. Adele is a holler. Farmers feed the world. Look at these, uh, all these one-liners here. 
I'm thinking of buying uh, buying it, the new Chitty. Uh, yeah, Wilmar, it's, it's a good one. It's definitely a good one. If you do think about buying it, please consider using my link to support the channel. Uh, how far do I slide this over? It looks like quite a bit. They are a tight fit. These things remind me of uh, those like uh, Roadrunner cartoons. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Oh, look at that. I got to get out the good old, good old hammer. Nice. The influencer. The, orig the original influencer. The rubber mallet. Looks like these are a pretty tight fit. What I was saying is it reminds me of the Roadrunner um, cartoons where uh, there would be like a wall coming or something and they have to get into the, the perfect position for it not to hit them or something, like in the tunnel. Or like Wacky Racers maybe it was. I don't know, it's all a blur. The nursery song. From nursery rhyme, bruh. <laughs> If it weren't for farmers, we wouldn't have horse milk. <laughs> Plenty of hollers around here. Some hollers. Okay, we have those. What's next? What's next is M3 by eights. So we need a, a good old eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I think I'll get you guys a little higher on the camera. So with that, there should be enough hardware in here, technically. One, two, three, Four, yep. And one, two, three, four. All right, that's good. That's a good sign. I'll pause your sign. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Dude, he's getting a Dell. <laughs> Wrong type of Dell. <laughs> All right, I'm assuming they're going to tell me the distance of where to put that. Uh, at least I hope they do. Also, there's no way that's going to fit, is it? I don't know. It doesn't look like... It doesn't look like that's going to fit. I also see a little spot right here that I want to fix real quick. Uh, what do we need? We need this guy? Nope. We need this one. Yeah, there we go. This guy too. I got my focus, focus hat on. That one's good. This one's good. I wonder what happened here. I wonder if I forgot to tighten the, this side. Um, that's what the hammer's for. I have a noob question. First of all, hey MacGyver. 
Uh, I'm printing ASA on the K1 and on larger prints, they're warping to the point that it bends up in the corners, the corners of the build plate. Uh, make sure that before you start the print in ASA, you let the printer heat soak. You're gonna have to be patient. Uh, it's probably the number one cause of print failures with ABS and ASA. You have to give it like 10, 15 minutes of you know the bed at 100, 105, uh, just so that the whole chamber, the hot bed, uh, everything heats up all the way. It's gonna be the only way that that that, that stuff doesn't just curl on you. Um, it curls because it cools in the corners as the print head moves, as uh, air from the fans just hits it. And the only way to prevent it is to have a steady hot uh, chamber. And uh, you'll be surprised uh, how much heating up your machine, it's called heat soak, how much heat soaking your machine makes a massive difference. Uh, so that would be my advice. Uh, try it again, uh, but this time, um, don't just start the print. Let, let it heat soak for 15 minutes uh, and then do the same print. Um, you can also turn the fan co fans completely off for at least four or so layers. Uh, that would also dramatically help. Um, so yeah, just a couple little things like that would, would go a long way in printing uh, both ABS and ASA. Uh, now, if you... If you want to avoid that entirely, you can always grab yourself some uh, some carbon fiber filament. And uh, carbon fiber additive makes it much, much easier to print both of those materials because the up to 30% added carbon fiber makes it so much stiffer that uh, it helps it with, with curling. There you go, the more you know. All right, we got this side in, let's do this side and then we'll figure out if this thing tells me the distance that it needs to sit at, oops. Why is this thing not magnetized anymore? Luckily, this Hodo set has a magnetization block. So let's go ahead and run it a few times. That should be good, and now... Oh, it's the hardware. Interesting. The hardware is some kind of alloy? Huh. That's kind of weird. Like, this is a legit magnet. Yeah? Huh. I don't know if I've ever seen that before in these kits. Oh, right. It's stainless, right? But that should still be... Have some magnetization to it. The more you learn. I also need to grab a pair of tweezers so I can help. Since my fat fingers can't, uh, can't get into some of these spots. I forgot that this thing's powered. I'm over here using it manually. All right, that's in there. Let's do this side. On the K1 of printing ASA or carbon fiber, do I need special nozzle? Uh, for carbon fiber, you do. For ASA, no. Um, I think the K1 has a stainless nozzle or a hardened steel nozzle, rather, because I, I was just thinking stainless steel because of this stuff. Uh, but I could be wrong. I think that might be on the Max and not on the actual K1. Uh, if that's the case, you do want a hardened steel nozzle. 
uh, with carbon fiber, but you don't need that to print hot. You just need it to print carbon fiber without destroying itself. Where, where did that piece go? Wait, what? Does that mean that I have an extra in here? Cause that'll be kind of wild. Oh, sorry guys, I don't even have the camera pointed over here. I just kind of got to work. Let's take that. Oh yeah, look at that. Whoopsie days. See guys, if I can build a Voron, come on, anyone can do it. If this moron can build a Voron, you guys should have been building them a long time ago. Okay, apparently I have no aim today. There we go. Okay, got one in there. There we go, okay. Those are all there. Now I have to find out how I'm doing that. see nickel plated screws i don't know oh, I, I have to keep up with the chat here uh i had the same thing with form bot screws they were butter soft oh maybe that's why i'm stripping some of them stainless is not ferrous metal dirt <laughs> chat i don't know everything i'm a designer man <laughs> stainless uh some stainless isn't ferrous magnetic thank you uh brian good sir not all stainless i actually I didn't know that. Uh, I did, I did. Um, today is gonna be the final one in the bundle. Uh, Chris, uh, what, what they like to do is before they send out individuals, they, they get like three or four of them in a group and then they ship them out. So I kind of like hold the emails until I have it all and then I just forward them over. So they'll have it soon. Hey, I ordered a P1S combo on the 17th of March, and it said it was supposed to ship out today. Uh, is BL backed up, or is this common? Any film in the same order arriving tomorrow? Uh, I have no idea. I've never ordered from them, um, and uh, my machine is right there in a the box, so I, I never even owned one or operated one. Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, but if you ordered one on the 17th of March, um, that, you, you know, you're still only a few days out. That's not, that's not that bad. Haha, <laughs> thought I got ripped off of Amazon seller stainless steel coffee filter. Turns out I was just done for, I would have been, I would have been upset. I had no idea. Voron is so 2022. <laughs> yes, right? Same. Did they make it with a larger print volume? Uh, I, I'm probably behind in the chat, but also don't remember which one you're talking about since we, we talked about about uh, talked about a bunch of, of printers. Chinese, <laughs> Chinese screws made from cheese. <laughs> hey, Jose, what's up? That time. Hey, y'all. Yeah, that it they, that that's how just the lag tables have become. You know, times have changed from when these lag tables were in their prime, and I have them doubled up. So it does shake, but it actually doesn't have any kind of negative uh, outcome on the um, on the print uh, uh, quality itself. So we're safe. Yeah, thanks. As we said, yep, yep, absolutely. 
No worries. All right, we got those in there. We got these in there. And it doesn't say where to put them. So I guess it's just up to me and we'll move them around later once we start mounting things to them. I'm guessing. I'm just gonna tighten them up just a hair uh, so that they're not flipping and flopping. And then once we start mounting things, I will be sure that I tighten these. What's gonna happen is I'll forget uh, and then something will move on me and I'll be like, oh, remember when I was supposed to tighten these? And then I'll take off everything that's mounted on here and then I'll tighten them. Uh, I'm calling all of that now. Yeah, he is around, he's here. <laughs> hey, Mark. Mark the neighbor, what's up, buddy? You've come, you've come to enjoy some, some quality nerdism. I'm, I don't even know if you can handle this amount of nerd uh, because you're a, a, a normal person. But you're about to find out. Um, all right, so we got those in. Let's flip that over. Okay, these guys, these Z joints, I actually put in already. So I'll just show them to y'all. So I got them in, uh, where is the camera pointing to? Here we go. Yeah, I got them in, they got the joints up top. They're pretty easy to put on, there were just four uh, on each side. So those are already in and the rails are nice and smooth. They're not lubed. We are all watching you, well, that's frightening. <laughs> Well, uh, if you guys have ever seen a person uh, print or print uh, build a 3D printer, uh, this is what it's like. And there's a there's a plethora of them down here. Why not lubed? Because while you're working on them, so this happened to me last time. Uh, when I'll go to move it, I'll pick it up and I'll just be covered in in grease. So I'm gonna wait until this thing is assembled to lube them. And I actually did a video on how I do that. Uh, you can take off the two little screws, fill it with grease, move the whole system up and down, and then it's lubricated, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, all right, it, according to uh, this, we have been framed. At this point, your frame should begin uh, to look like the picture. Okay, cool. All right, now we're down to the motors, which should be interesting. I've never built a, a Voron 2.4. Uh, so this is like a new thing to me since the Trident doesn't have the system. So I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, which pulley before you start, uh, the shaft assembly, make sure to measure the length of your GT, GT 216 pulleys. There are two different lengths. The length will determine how you assemble the shaft assembly and which printed spacers to use. Fantastic. I don't think I printed any spacers. Was I supposed to print spacers? I guess I was. Uh, let's find those pieces. Okay, I have these gears. I'm gonna need them. Um, I'm doing some assumption here, but I'm probably gonna need some of these bearings. So let's get those out. Uh, we're gonna need these pulleys. Okay, I know there's some shafts in here somewhere that I'm gonna need. Here they are. Here's another set of pulleys. That looks relevant. We'll get that out. Uh, anything else? We'll need the feet, right? We'll need the rubber feet. Those are in here somewhere. Yep, okay, we got the rubber feet. All right. How's this thing doing? Yeah, looking good. Uh, all right, we've been framed. Yeah, that's right. Hey, BWS, BWs, BWs. I remember from last time. If a moron builds a Voron, then the Voron would be a moron's Voron. <laughs> nice. We got riddles up in here. Hey, Nate. Why don't people hit the like button? That's a good question. There's 56 of y'all. How many likes we got? I can't tell from my side, can I? I have to go here. How many likes we got? What, one? According to my stream, we got one. Look at that, shameful 21 likes on a 56 person stream. 
<laughs> hey, JP, how you doing, man? I was kind of hoping Prusa would uh, open source theirs enough to allow it to run any printer. Yeah, yeah, probably not. Well, it depends. It depends. They might like bombshell everybody with a bunch of new stuff. Who knows? All right. So which one of these do we need? Or it's just kind of asking me to differentiate between the two different types. Oh, we lost the grub screw. Oh, I remember this conversation from one of the other build build videos. The grub screw convo. So far, these are all the same. Are they supposed to be different? They are. Uh, these are all the same. P5 pulley. Hold up. These are not pulleys. These are idlers. Yeah, all of these pulleys are the same. All that is the same, so that's not good. Let me check if there's more. Since I could be mistaken. Mm, steak. Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to have to find out as we go. Maybe I'm just not reading it. Maybe it's like you need the larger pulley and those are all the larger pulleys. Actually, let's measure. Zero these bad boys out. Let's see which ones we got. So we got the 15.3. Yeah, 15.3 are the pulleys that I have. So I guess that's just to know the spacing of them. And I don't think I printed any spacers, so we'll find out. We'll find out about that. Gotta go. See ya. See you later, Mark. I bored you that quick, huh? <laughs> he lasted uh, three minutes. <laughs> Set screw, right? All these girls the same. All these pulleys the same. Bro. Hey, Anastasia. Do I watch X Hamster? No, unless unless it's something that I know. No, I don't think so. I'm gonna I'm gonna research what that is. Oh, that's good thing I didn't look that up on <laughs> on stream. <laughs> Yeah, it is not. <laughs> that is a spam uh, spam message if I've ever seen one. <laughs> good thing, <laughs> good thing I did that one off screen. I would have been demonetized right then and there. <laughs> oh, he says. <laughs> ah, yo, Anastasia, you got me, you got me pretty good. <laughs> You got me pretty good. <laughs> uh, listen, if uh, if you're a bot, whatever. But if you're a real person, <laughs> I hope you're enjoying that moment. <laughs> uh, worth it. Worth it. <laughs> All right. The flange the pulley. <laughs> Sounds like something I shouldn't Google. Well, I just did. <laughs> uh, start assembly of the... I'm like, why is it so quiet over there? The, the print finished. I'll uh, pop the doors open just the hair. Let all those fumes from the uh, uh, ABS go directly to my brain. Um, to start assembly of the belted Z drives, you will start by removing the top flange from four of these things. I didn't even know you could remove them. I learn something new every day. I'm at work and I searched x I'm so pretty sure now IT knows and I'll be fired tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks for ruining my life. <laughs> Listen, it wasn't my fault. I looked it up too. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. 
Yeah, how do you explain that one? Also, uh, how do you how do you explain uh, getting these flanges off? Because uh, we need to set up some kind of deflanging area over here. Let's see, maybe let's try the vice method. Nope, that's not gonna work. Hmm. How can I deflange this? I didn't know this was a thing, guys. Use a pair of pliers and pull the top flange off the pulley. Why do they make it sound like it's so easy? All right, hold on, let me think about this. There's gotta be a, a good way to do this with a hammer. All right, if I put this in here. Bookmark what stream for tomorrow. That <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I've used the vice in a bottle opener. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that would do it. I was a kid, my little brother and I built a lot of model cars. My dad uh, built us a nice corner to work in. This was before they had... Uh, that no fumes glue. No wonder my brain's fried. <laughs> no, I've, I've definitely never done this before. And that's probably what every single uh, girl says on X Hamster. It was really easy to do with a plier. Well, maybe it's just this one. Let's see if I can do it with another one. I mean, I'm bending it. Oh, okay, there's one. All right, so it just needs some, needs some persuasion. Let's see. So I can just kind of go around. Oh, you know what? Let me get a big Allen key. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> yeah, okay. We got a system now. All right, here's how we're doing it. Pulley. Plier. There it goes. All right, and one more. There it goes. All right, cool. That's a neat little trick. <laughs> Google X hamster. <laughs> and I got videos of rodents doing extreme sports, mountain biking, bike jumping. <laughs> I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. I milk X hamsters. There he goes again, everybody. We lost them. Uh, let me take out these uh, grub screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. These all can go back in there. Oh, wait, they don't need to be doubled up, I don't think. Set screws. No, we're calling them grub screws. Well, Zumi, I tried to use the, the vice grip for something, but 
It wasn't in the cards this time around. The plier did it. The plier did it. Let's, let's hope you don't have to use them. I, I also just threw out the washers that I took off, so we'll see how that works. Okay, that's what the spacers are for, huh? Oh boy. It's always the grub screws. Don't forget the Loctite, the grub screws, so they don't come loose. Um, the pulleys, man. I mean, not pulleys. The the spacers. I definitely didn't do any spacers. The spacers are labeled A, B, and C. If you have 15.5 millimeter pulleys, and you don't have a C, then you don't have a C spacer. The manual uh, will be using the 14 millimeter long pulley. Uh, well, it looks like I'll be generally putting them in that area and figuring it out as I go. Classic scenario. One, two, three, four. Do you guys know if I need the spacers or this is something that I can align without them? Anyone know? Jeff, do you know since you built a Micron? <laughs> we go through the set grub argument every time. Hey, I'm just reading off the manual. They're calling it a grub screw. You know, who am I to argue with them? All right, here we go. We got the rods. Oh, I thought they were smooth. They actually, these things are actually notched. So that's cool. All right, so on this side, in this direction, we have one of these. Nope, nope, dropped it. Nope, that's backwards. Go like this, let's get out the good old Loctite. which seems like a bad idea when you don't have the proper proper tools, but let's assemble one, see what it is. If I have to skip and move on, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, I can also print them real quick. But let's get this in the general area first and figure it out as we go. So these go somewhere like that. Then Another one goes on the same direction. And then what's the, oh, it's, it's a bearing, okay. All right, so we got one of those, one of these, and then one of these bearings goes flat on the end. Fire up the V0, they're small. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm not worried about that part. Um, it's the time that it's gonna take to find them and do all that, but I will, I will boot up the V0. It would crush this print job specifically. 
Uh, that's still cooling. I love that they put the blue stuff in the red bottle, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that's why you said that. It's just because of that. It's, it's their other one. Getting showered at the Peloton session plus being sick. Be back soon. Oh yeah, being sick plus Peloton. You're gonna sleep good. Don't do anything hilarious. <laughs> I saw a squirrel chewing on a grub screw in a hamster wheel. I saw a squirrel chewing a grub screw into screwing a grub screw into a hamster wheel. Hey, Wilmar, thank you. That's awesome. Thank you for that. Very kind. Welcome, everybody. I will start editing a video tomorrow night on the SK-1. And when that video is ready, um, all members get to see it a day early and have the comments and all that fun stuff before everyone else. Uh, so enjoy your membership. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and I'll just open a new window. I'll minimize this. Bring this up here. Prepare. Boron V0 device. All right, so we're gonna do 105, 160, and we'll go down to the fan, the Nevermore fan at 100. And we'll give that a solid five or so minutes. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, thank you. <laughs> that is very kind of you guys. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, Mika. All right. So I guess I need to wait for those spacers, uh, but I'm sure there's more to do in the meantime. And actually, in the meantime, I need to figure out where the spacers are, like file wise, right? Uh, so let's do that real quick because that seems pretty crucial. Uh, let's open our Micron folder. Here, you'll get to see how I manage this, my folder structure here. Uh, so red is don't print, uh, green is I've already printed. So let's go STL. This is gonna be in the, uh, not Z, uh, yeah, Z drive, right? Oh, spacers, oh, look at that, I missed it. Look at that, it's not green or red. I just, I missed, I missed it. Interesting. All right, and I do have the 15.5 since they're 15.3. Uh, what does that mean? What does this mean? Spacer A 1.2. Printed 64. What's a podge? Two, two point six. What? I don't know what any of that means. Uh, A, B, C, easy as one, two, three. The spacer label A, B, is C. If you have 15.5 millimeter pulleys, then you don't have a C spacer. The manual will be using the 14 pulley. Oh, oh, so I'm just gonna have two of them, is what that's saying, since I have the longer one. So whatever podge is, I'm guessing I need these two. Anyone know? Oh, podge is a brand of belts and idlers. Metal's 80 tooth is podge. Oh, I see what you mean. Like this guy's podge. Okay. Uh. So this says 1.2 millimeter. This says 5.2 millimeter. This is also 5.2. Hey, Night Train, how you doing? So which ones do I need? I, it's very hard to tell from, from this. So this is saying use these if you have podge. Otherwise, use this and the other one.
I hate you. Thank you. <laughs> Very kind. Uh... Oh yeah, that sounds fun. Uh, craft show. Uh, Jeff, if you're in here, or anyone that's built a Micron Plus, let me know which one of these I need. Um, I honestly don't know. Should I just print all of them? It seems like there's four. Uh, I don't see any labels anywhere. Oh, this one's B. This one is C. This one is A. A and B. Oh, okay, never mind. I figured it out. I figured it out. So we need these. All right, I'm gonna move this off screen so that I can pull up uh, this one, I believe. Nope, that's a trident. Uh, we need this one. Where, what, where to go? All right, right here. So I need this one, four of them, and one of these. Okay, okay, we got it. Clone. Three, clone, three, arrange. All right, Voron, yep, we'll keep that all the same. Let's slice, how long is this gonna take? Seven minutes, perfect. All right, let's see where the temps are at. 97, so the chamber is still pretty cold. It's not even 30 C yet, so I'm gonna give it a few more minutes. Make sure it's hot in there. They're tiny, print them all. Yeah, I just wanted to go as fast as possible. I didn't realize how tiny if there's seven minutes. That's pretty That's pretty damn tiny. <laughs> B is two millimeters and C is 2.6. What did I do? Did I close the folder for real? This one is 5.2. This one is two millimeters. And 2.6, so you're saying this. But the, but Jeff, you're saying B and C. The instructions say we don't need a C. We just need an A and a B. Why am I confused about this? I'm just going to print them all. What interface do you guys recommend for new Clipper users? Fluid for me. I always, I have always found it slightly easier to jump into, and I've kept it on pretty much every machine that I run. I actually don't have any mainsail machines at all. All right, twelve minutes, not so bad. For power, eighty tooth Metal Gear, fifteen point five millimeter pulley. Oh, stock micron. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Let's see how far along this thing is. 105. What is the chamber at? Almost at 30. Once that goes above 30, I'll, I'll send it. Uh... I guess, let me see what's immediately next on the instructions while we wait. Oh, I see. Wait, plot twist. 
Plot twist, my pulley isn't the same. Oh, that's why you were saying 80 tooth pulley. Wait, pre-printed flat side. Oh, that's the printed pulley. Oh, I didn't have to take these flanges off, guys. See, this is why these live streams exist. Uh, I did not have to do this uh, because this kit comes with these pulleys so that you don't have to print them yourself. So what's in this manual right here are printed pulleys that go over this. And then you put a spacer on top. Oh, well, now I feel like a delinquent. Yeah, and then the bearing goes in the front. All right. So that's, I don't need this. I don't need these. Hopefully, uh... Well, good thing I ruined them. All right. Hey, Zach. Spare parts. Yeah, it's slightly worse than that because I, I, I put those flanges uh, in this trash bag that's full to the brim and they're down in the bottom. Um... So that's fun. All right, so that would go on there and then a bearing would go on the front of that. And they're already like pre-spaced out. So it would go like this, essentially. Let me just tighten this down just so we have a base. Yep, and then this guy. All right, let's let me let me just print these spacers so we can figure this out. Uh, let's just send to the printer. Upload. Gotta love that ASA residue that's on there. <laughs> Use the extra pulleys you have a four wheel drive RC car. <laughs> yeah, but you kind of need the flanges. Oh well, it's all right. It is okay. Where am I? Weezes. Microplastics. Oh yeah, there's all kinds of ABS and ASA deep inside. Good old mechanical leveling on this one. Gotta love the V0. It's just, I don't talk about it enough, I think. I mean, you guys saw, I turned it on. I let it warm up because we're printing um, ASA and it's off to the races.
All right, while that's happening. Uh, let me keep going here. So I need to do a bunch of inserts, so that, that might actually be a perfect time. One, I get to take out my super cool little micro uh, work, what's it called, vice over here. And we get to take out all of these big pieces. And do a whole lot of inserts. And are they from the outside? Yeah, they're all outside. Let's have some kind of organization set up. Let's do it this way. Missing one. This one is here. Got that guy. This guy. This guy, this guy. All right. That and this. I have enough vices. <laughs> Better did you get one of the new shady printers? I did. I've been using it for a while now. Um, I printed this guy on it. It was just in the, in uh, a short, in a short video. Look at that quality. Unbelievable. The machine is unbelievable. So yeah, I, I'm working on a video for it. Uh, I just couldn't get it done for launch day because I'm waiting on a, on a filament. Uh, Papa, if it's small parts, yes. Uh, just make sure that the nylon is very dry and make sure that that hot bed is as hot as you're going to be able to get it. Um, also, print with a draft shield and make sure that your fan, your cooling fan is off. Uh, if, you're, if your machine is, can, can get to those temperatures without melting PTFE, you should be good. All right, tons of inserts. Each pair of Z drive halves has a total of eight required headsets, uh, heat sets. As shown in illustration below, you're building a 180, then you only need seven. The darker green one isn't needed if you're building a 180. Okay, so we're doing seven. Seven per pair. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. I've actually been soldering quite a bit lately. Uh, and so I have to make sure that I check the battery on this thing. Try draft shield. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. Draft shield is probably a must on anything open and slinging. Hey Federer, I know this is off topic, but what kind of music do you like to listen to? I listen to mostly EDM, uh, and EDM is like a really wide thing. Mostly like pretty chill stuff. I occasionally like to rage out with some bro step here and there. I've been listening to electronic music since my very first music choices back in back when I was a kid. Uh, but other than that, I listen to pretty much everything uh, occasionally. I do dwell in some lyrical hip hop. Not the mainstream stuff necessarily, but a little bit, but uh, mostly just to check out what the scene is all about, really. 
and the new people that are coming out here and there. But uh, mostly, mostly electronic music. Um, right now, for example, I'm listening to Rez. Uh, she is just straight killing it right now with uh, with the recent album. Really, really, really enjoying it. There's a b bunch. Of, there's too many to name, probably, but mostly electronic music. It's just how my brain, how my brain functions. Do I see some braided sleeves? Yes, sir. Yeah, you see them in there? <laughs> yeah, that's all the uh, wiring for the LEDs. For the LED bars. I had to get creative with it because of the way that they do their, uh, their LED wiring in here for the FISEC one. Uh, but I do have the expander board in there. I'm just using it for the fans right now. I was going to have some more LEDs, but for the tool head, and I have a bunch of different kinds. I have the RGB version, the other kind, uh, but I just haven't gotten to it. And so far, I've just been really enjoying the machine, the way that it is set up. It's just, it prints really great. It's been super reliable. As you can see, you just hit print and it goes. All right, we are hot. Let me get my tweezers. Uh, would you guys rather have the camera on the printer or what I'm doing? I'm just gonna do some inserts, so nothing too crazy. But yeah, let me know where you want the camera. Actually, that print's almost done anyway. My LEDs are currently mounted under the rails. Uh, found out that aux fan uh, won't fit with them. Ah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So I had to put them on, on this way. Here, let me show you a closer view. Yeah, there's like these little clips that just pop into the rail on the side and they just lean them out of the way. Yeah, here's a good example like that. So that's why that's why you see the wiring like that. It's because one goes to the other side and then from the other side we go down to the motherboard. So I decided to sleeve them since I don't want any more like extra colors in there. So it's just black and red. I didn't hear anything about dubstep. <laughs> Almost <laughs> Almost make you want, almost make you want to unsubscribe. No, I mean dubstep is EDM. Uh, I just, it's not the only thing that I listen to. Drum and bass, Nero. Um, uh, man, I really want Nero to come back in full force. Um, Delta Heavy is probably the number one drum and bass for me at the moment. Um, there's a lot. There's just too many to name. Um, I've seen more dubstep shows than. Well, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to say that. I've seen a ton of shows. I used to go all the time when I was a bit younger, pre, pre kid. Uh, that's like all we used to do every single weekend. We would go to a dubstep show. Um, there was a dubstep at my wedding. <laughs> Believe me, man, I'm, uh, I'm in it. All right. So let's do this top one first. Actually, I'm just going to do them all and we'll do it that way. We'll tackle it. One by one. And I finally get to use this little vise, which I'm very excited about. Oh, the one thing I did want to check is the battery. I got to check that. So let me just put this one in and we will check the battery. All right, as always with these inserts, you want to go just below the surface uh, so that it makes a little lip. That way it's much harder for it to pull out. Ow, that was sharp. All right, let's check this battery real quick. What are we at? 23, that's probably low, 3.8. Yeah, let me grab another battery. 3.8 is fine, but when I have other batteries, there's zero, zero point in going that low. I did get a new battery charger. I'm probably going to throw up a, a video review of that charger on my, uh, on my RC page at some point, because it is a really cool charger and I haven't seen anybody talk about it. Oh man, are all these batteries gonna be low? 
Let's see. 23.9. All right, I'll use this one for a little while. All my bats are low. I didn't realize that. Oh, no, I have one more. I got one more to try. Well, I'll test it because it's on the quad. But I can test it on the quad. Let's go, battery. What are you at? 22.3. Okay, that's the lowest one. Okay, I don't want to do that one. All right, so all five of my batteries are somewhat low. I'm going to keep this one in there because... If the alarm goes off, I'll at least know that that battery is gone. Uh, you know what I'll do? Let's do this. I'm going to use the charger and we'll throw one on the charger. Because like, isn't that the point? All right, let's take this. Let's plug her in over here somewhere. I set up all these like systems for myself and I very rarely use them. All right, we'll put it over here. Let's plug that in. Yeah, this is the new charger I got. It's tiny so I can carry it with me. It runs off of other battery packs. So if you have like a 6S, you could charge a smaller battery with that. Or if you have like a, even these, and you can uh, charge a whole bunch of uh, Whoop batteries. Um, but yeah, this thing is amazing. Uh, it has so many features. So we will plug this in. There we go, and it has its own power supply and fan, so you don't have to worry about that. Also, what's cool is when you plug the battery in, even, even without this thing being in, it tells you specs about the battery. Whoops. There, let's set it. LiPo, 6S, balance charge, condition, the current. We can go to, what are these, 1250s? So 1.2. Uh, yeah, charge condition. Let's see what we can go up to. 22.2. Uh, I think we gotta go less here. I think we gotta go to, whoops. Yeah, this guy, 420. 422 is for the other batteries. Right, is that right? I don't remember now. Let's go 418 just to be safe. Let's save. Let me start. It'll do a little song for us. There we go. We got all of our cells. Cool little charger, and it's super fast, very powerful. 4.2. Yeah, let's, let's go up then. I believe you. I don't remember. My, uh, my older charger is so ancient. It's like from, I have like an old charging station from just way back uh, from when I first got into RCs. Uh, I'm surprised it even does lipos, but I've been using it forever and it's been fine. It's just a mess. It's just messy. There's a lot of wires. There's just a lot going on. So I wanted to get something new um, and I figured technically speaking, it's fine for like in home or in garage use. But that thing on the go is just, it's so much better. I can just throw it in a bag. It takes no space, no extra power supply like mine has. It's just so modern. Uh, and it also has uh, PD power, uh, which is another thing that I wanted to check out. I wanted to see if I could use it for the soldering iron. Because uh, if that's the case, then that would be amazing as well. So lots of potential uh, for that charger. Oh, let me make sure that the fan on the V0 is running because I think it turns off my macro on it is old. Yeah, I think once the print is done, yep, it turns off. So I need it to run. 
for a little while since it's ASA. All right, one more of these. Zumi, I absolutely love this vice. Thank you so much. This thing is awesome. Don't get me wrong, I really did enjoy my printed one. But this thing is great. Uh, I have not been looking up here. 3.8 is storage level perfect. Yes, right. It has, it has been. Uh, Zumi, yes. Uh, it, it has turned that way. Uh, when it was still new and fresh uh, and I was young, it was very exciting and just super cool and new. And it paid homage to some of the older stuff that I used to listen to, like Corn, Limbiscuit, Lincoln Park. It had that same effect, like during the drop uh, when you're in the mosh pit of Rammstein or... Uh, you know, when you're just listening to those type of bands, it brought me back to that, but without the whiny lyrics that often take place in that type of music that's like dead now, you know? Uh, so I really enjoyed that part of it. And then you listen to it over two or three years and it gets, you know, uh, people like really try to copy everyone else because it's electronic music is somewhat easier to make if you have the talent, of course, to, to do... Uh, to, make, to you know, produce music like that. But then it kind of evolved. Like dubstep now isn't what dubstep was you know, 10 years ago or whatever it was. So I do agree with this. Uh, a lot of it is just crappy music. Uh, and uh, though the people that have out, you know, stood the, t the test of time uh, are really making some amazing tunes now. It's, it's pretty good. There, there's good music out there. Really, really, really good music out there. Had a shirt idea, just ducking around with a 3D printer and the duck smashed up. <laughs> nice, I kind of like that. How well does it handle parallel charging? Uh, that's another thing I wanted to try. I have a parallel board. From what I understand, this thing should handle it just fine. Uh, that was one of the use cases for it. So as you can see, it does 200 uh, watts from DC and 60 watts AC. Um, it, should, it should be pretty good. And then this is what I was really interested in, the, the PD power. So it has a USB-C out right here right down here so it should be able to do a usb-c to um what's it called you know thing right to my right to my uh, uh d60 i believe uh, i haven't used it yet it's still new but yeah once it gets warm the fan turns on it is audible but it's not bad and it's just tiny like it's the size of a battery pack in fact this battery pack is bigger than it you know so it has a bunch of different features uh, built in and it's it's just cool. I, I, I dig it. I have a Venom Duo. Yeah, Venom Duo. I remember those They were really expensive back in the day, right? Yeah, yep, I agree Or you're most welcome. I knew you'd like it. Yes Zoomy Vice. Yeah, Zoomy Vice. I like it Classic rock all the way uh, I, there, there's some music out there for you as well. Um, Wilkinson is a good one for people that like uh, like classic rock type stuff. It's a little bit more chill. So dubstep is really aggressive, right? And it's it has those like younger, uh, really energetic and aggressive sounds uh, that if you're not used to the music or want to listen to that music and you hear it, it's it almost like attacks the ears in a way. So I understand what you're saying. Uh, but there's so many really talented people that are in a ton of sub-genres in dubstep uh, that isn't in your face. It just uses electronic music to kind of replicate certain feelings uh, without giving you direct, direct lyrics. And there's a, lot, there's a lot of singing in these things too. Um, but yeah, Wilkinson is, is one I think that you would like. There you go, I hear the, I hear the fan turn on and it's, it's so quiet. It's, this thing's cool. Uh, what's that called? The charger? It's called the Sky RC B6AC. There's other ones like there's a B6DC and it's really inexpensive, but that one requires a battery to charge other batteries. It's like a fields charger. This one is the B6AC uh, so that you can plug it in. Uh, Anton. Antoine. Anton. It's probably just Anton. Uh, would you say the K1C or Flash for Adventure 5M Pro is better? I say the K1C is probably, oh man, that's a tough one because you said Pro. 
Uh, I don't have the 5M Pro, I have the, just the 5M, so I automatically assumed, oh, the enclosure is better. If they're both enclosed, uh, they're probably pretty close. I would probably just go for whichever one's cheaper at that point. Uh, the K1C is pretty damn pretty damn good though. Uh, like I do, I do really like the K1C. Um, that's a tough one. They're pretty close. They're pretty close. Uh, I think I would go with K1C because uh, Creality probably has slightly more support. Yes, can, yeah, me too. Like that—that's what I'm talking about. Like it gives me those feelings uh, that I that, that you you would get uh, when you'd be listening to something like that. Just that makes you just rock out, you know. And it, it always does. Antoine, okay, okay, yep, got it. Pronounced, yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, let's keep going. What's my battery at? Should be good. Three point nine. These four are in. What's next? All right, so these don't get any more. I thought they got more, but that's okay. Okay, so these are done then. Now we're on to this. These get a bunch at the top, two a piece. All right, let's see if I can get two in here at the same time. Yes, I can. Perfect. Uh, let me just double check. Yep, we got two going on up here. Thunderstruck. Classic. Also, Delta Heavy has been killing it lately. I've just been really enjoying everything they're putting out. I wish, I wish every, all these artists had more music. I saw Feed Me just came out with some songs. Feed Me was obnoxious back in the day. Trap Door, that song blew my mind live. I remember they played it as an encore, and I punched the lady in the back of her head. <laughs> Ah, to be young again. All right. We'll keep them in together. Let's do this set. Uh, for those just jumping in, by the way, check the pinned comment at the top of the chat. What time we got? Almost 11. Uh, check out that pinned comment at the top of the chat. Uh, that's where you can win yourself a spool of uh, PLA Plus from 3D Max. I usually give it away at the end of the stream. Uh, so throw your name in there. Make sure you answer the question. You have to be in the United States and you have to be present for the giveaway. Uh, and if all that is met, then you might have uh, yourself a spool of filament. So please check that out. That's up there. And then also check out shop at 3dprintsos.com if you want some pretty cool merch. Uh, shirts, work mats, mugs, that type of thing. Hoodies. All right, gotta love some heated inserts. All right, what are we at on the battery? 3.87, we're getting low. What are we at over here? Four, 401. We're gonna do some rapid charging and de and de charging. <clears throat> Discharge. <laughs> Sounds horrible. 
Uh, all right, now we're going to do the fronts of this. So we just need four on the outermost spots. Okay, we can do that. Actually, it looks like, uh, no, I don't want to clamp that area. All right, let's clamp this. There we go. So just the outer ones, right? Yes. Ah! Of course I dropped it. Classic. Uh, I actually haven't had a chance to watch any Chitty Tech um, Q1 Pro videos. Have you guys watched any? I saw that my entire feed had them, but I just didn't have the time with work. And then coming home and then into this. Gotta love it. Seems like a solid printer. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been amazing. Um, I've definitely been enjoying it. Kind of ugly. Yeah, it has that appliance look that Chitty Tech machines have. Yeah, it's become like a bit of their signature in a way. It does look good in certain situations, like my room is mostly white at the office and uh, it does look good. It's like this black, you know, appliance looking thing in an office um, and it does look the part. It definitely does. Maybe not as like a fancy consumer product, but as a printer in an office, it definitely looks good. All right, so that's done. Maybe we can get uh, enough juice in this battery. I don't know, it's running a little bit low. 3.88, that should be okay. I'm gonna still, still keep going. And that one is at 4.06. It'll probably be done charging when I'm done putting all these inserts in. <laughs> There's something very relaxing about putting in heat, heated heat pre press inserts. I can't believe English is still so tough for me. Work mats are awesome. Get them now. <laughs> Thank you. They are awesome, actually. Like, they, they are legit. I know, obviously, I always take it for a grain of salt from the person selling them. But, uh... They are pretty damn good. I'm very happy with them. The mugs too. Hey, the Matrix song. Brian, if you're still in here, I know you're a fan of this one. Yeah, like this is this is a great song right here. This is something I would I would listen to. English is tough for me, and it's my first language. <laughs> Yeah, it's even tougher when if I like spend a day with my parents or something. Um, I, I'll notice. I'll notice. I, I start to. I start to get sluggish.
Zoom me. For example, do you like this song? If you can hear it. Like this is still by all you know implications electronic music. There's obviously instruments in it, but it's very likely that those are played on a synth. Although I could be wrong, obviously. Because there's a lot of music like this that's also great. Perfect for when you're working on something. Oh, you know who you'd like? Uh, do you know who Buckethead is? Or maybe uh, uh, Ratatat. They're both like instrumental type. <laughs> she also now plays Barbie songs. <laughs> uh, what do you think Creality will release on April 9th? Why April 9th? They have their anniversary. Oh, you mean like for their anniversary? Uh, I don't think it's anything specific. I mean, obviously everyone wants the AMS and I hope that they release that at some point. Uh, they've always kind of denied when that's going to happen. Uh, but they released like a teaser image and uh, the teaser image had a larger version of the uh, Ender 3 V3 in it. Uh, it had a laser engraver that's enclosed. It had a new resin machine. It had a 3D scanner. Uh, and one more item that I don't remember, but it's a part of, you know, their whole ecosystem as they call it. So I think they're just gonna do updates for all that stuff. Buckethead played in Guns N' Roses. Yeah, yeah, I think he did. But his own stuff is like instrumental. It's really good. What a character. Ratatat's another real good one. All right. I think the inserts are done. And what do we end up with the battery? 3.9, 3.9. All right, we're good. 3.84. Ooh, that one cell. That one cell didn't like it. All right, I'm going to unplug the charger, unplug this battery. Okay, so we didn't need it, but let's see what this is at. 4.12. Yeah, it's going pretty good. And the fan's blowing cold air, which is nice. Good to know that it's not like overheating or something. Uh, all right, we have our million spacers that are done. So let's get those off. Uh, this battery needs to go elsewhere. Soldering stuff I can put back here for now. I'll have to clean that up. Battery goes back in storage. The drone bag. The worst kind of storage. No storage. Um, bam. We got those bad boys. Uh, where is this image? It was on Facebook. It was on their Facebook page. <laughs> but it's not irritating. Nice. Good. Good. If you have an X Max, X3 X Max, you wouldn't buy the new Chitty X1 Pro. Right. X Max is so much larger. Now, I have this, and I do have to say that I do like the 380 print size, 280 print size, much more than I do 250. Um, but that is just a better printer. So that's, uh, I guess, irrelevant. 
But yeah, I think if you have this machine, you, you're not jumping out of your boots to buy another one. There's nothing wrong with this machine. It's fantastic. All right, hold on. We have this print. Uh, I know this is irrelevant to this stream, but look at that. It just completely comes off. ABS. Here's a transparent ABS off the Voron. Non-washed. The glue is non-washing. Let me cover my face so that it, it can focus. And then, of course, the back. I mean, it's ABS. God, I love I love printing ABS. I don't know why. But it just... I can't believe we can have this. Like, this is a product. This is a product that was made in minutes in my basement. It's just crazy to me. And it has been crazy to me for, for the past... Uh, for the past, what, six plus years? And it just... It's insane that it's still crazy to me. Try PC. Yeah, if they have like a, a transparent black PC, I guess most PCs that color, right? If it doesn't have carbon in it. And don't take it bad, but it just looks like under extruded gray. Uh, Rafa, I did, I do hear that a bunch because you can see the infill uh, through the layers. Uh, but no, I mean this looks. It might just be that the way the light hits. Don't forget, my light here is so much more intense than than most. I have lights above me. I have lights to the side of me. I have lights on the side over there. So you can like see through everything way more so. But yeah, it's. I love the slightly transparent look. Like here, you can see. See how like my fingers behind it right there. So you do have like you can see some of the electronics, especially when the lights kick on. Uh, behind it and obviously this still has glue on it um, So it needs it needs a little damp damp cloth, but so good This print quality I Would say is just amongst the best It just it looks like it looks like a purchased product. I Love it. I love it I have some PC carbon fiber prints amazing. Yeah, I, I need to, I mean, I have some. Uh, I just haven't printed with it in a while. Got to dig up some of the transparent purple ABS and print out some parts, atomic purple. Oh, that'd be so cool. I love that, I love that. <laughs> For some reason, transparent purple is, uh, here. Transparent purple is another one of those nostalgic things for me. I, man, I have so many handhelds now. I blame Randy May. You know? You gotta love it. Yeah, a, a transparent purple uh, would be very cool. Uh, what printer printed that part? That was the Voron Trident just now. And then our, our little spacers were on the V0. The trusty V0, this thing has been awesome. I need to do a video on it. It was technically supposed to be the next video after this one, but then uh, some new exciting machines came out. But I definitely need to do one because it's good. I've, I've loved it. Here, actually, let me turn it off. Uh, let's see. We go here. Host. Shut down. Oh, here's another good song. Okay. Let's get these spacers on there. Hopefully I can figure this out. Uh, uh, let's sort the spacers first. Because now there's a million different types. Alright, so these are the super little guys. Then we have these three. Then we have these. And then finally these big ones. Okay. Was that printed? No, that was not printed. The transparent purple one was not printed.
Uh, okay, this guy. So... So between that one and this guy, we need to have a spacer. And it says spacer B. Spacer B is this larger one. And then this goes flanged this way. And that should leave spacer A and a bearing where our the bearings. All right, looks like I need to move everything up or that's not gonna work. All right, so this spacer is too big. This B spacer is too big. So that's out. Now let's try this one. If we put this one on, then this one, then this little guy, then this one, does that work? Yes. All right, so that's our combo. Yep, that's this is our combo right here. We have a little spacer and then a middle spacer. Is that so we have the, the largest one and the smallest one. Bearing A. I wonder if this one will fit a little bit better. Let's see. If not if I don't do the smallest one, if I, if I do the medium one. I mean, that fits even better. That fits perfect. So we have a medium one in there and the the uh, the second to, to or the opposite the medium one here and the second to thickest one there. That looks so look like a different four wheel drive car. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? This one on their Facebook, but I didn't find anything. Just post say anything live tomorrow with a picture of the K1 Max Ender 3. That's actually not the V3 Ender 3 V3. Uh, if you look closely of the on onto that image of the V3, you will notice that uh, uh, it's actually a little bit larger. All right, I'm gonna keep this loose, uh, just because I'm not 100% sure. But this is this is the this is definitely the spacing. It, it fills in the whole rod, so I'm guessing that's correct. Also, I have one of these right here. I can just put this in here. All right. So what are we? What's off here? Everything. Everything is off. Hmm, so this pulley, all right, hold on. We got to do some exploration here because this is one of those things that's specific to this kit and not so much the Voron. So the thing that I'm going by is this, um, the actual 3D print itself is gonna help me figure this out. Here, let me get you guys closer so we can do it together. All right, so here's what we're doing. This way. All right, so based on this 3D print, the two bearings go right there. And I had this pulley going this way. And if the pulley's that way, you can tell that there won't be any room for the bearing, which means this pulley has to go this way, which means I need a small spacer. There we go, battery's done. Very nice. And it got like silent in the room. Okay, that's pretty good, but it looks like the spacer is not big enough, so we need a slightly larger one. Let's try this one. Okay, that to me looks perfect. 
Okay, so that's that's gonna be our spacer one. So if that's the case, let me just go ahead and tighten this a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Okay, that's centered there. Uh, now let's figure out this pulley. This pulley has to go this way. Based on where that hole is right there. And based on that, we need this guy. Like that. And that gives us the perfect space for this bearing. And in fact, it has enough room for this guy. Oh, perfect. That's perfect. There we go. So we just made our little stack. And that is perfect, right? So if we look through here, oh, it looks like well, this can even use a larger one, huh? So this one is definitely centered. But this one uh, can be moved, it looks like, just a little bit. If that's the case... Okay, so I think I need to swap those two. Let's try that. And then we'll just make four more once we get this. So if I move this out, put this spacer on, this guy, then this one, then this back on. Let's see. Come on. There we go. All right. Then this. Then our bearing. All right. Let's see now. All right, that looks good. Okay, there it is. Let's try this. Ready? Let's flip it. Perfect. You guys tell? There we go. If I get it flat. There we go. So that is our setup. Uh, let me tighten this down, and we will mimic this for the rest of them. Well, that was actually fun, to be honest. <laughs> Like as much as uh, as much as I would have enjoyed there to be instructions for this, uh, that was actually a fun little exploration. All right, so once again, that fits perfectly, spins perfectly, and bada bang, bada boom. Uh, don't forget belt before you bolt together. That's right. That's right. I'm not going to bolt them together. I just want to make these first. They feel good. This has some weight to it, actually. It might not be a good thing, but... Because it's not printed. It feels good. And it looks... It looks superb. Oh, here's a little thing I wanted to show. Uh, so, it's a little tutorial that we'll do. I'll do a little, um... I'll do a little uh, cut of a, what's it called? Not a short. Uh, what do I call them, clips? All right, so check this out. So this is a black uh, carbon fiber ASA print. And this part is printed down on the PI sheet. So it has this texture to it that, that not only has some glue on there, uh, but it just, it doesn't look uh, as clean because it was on the bottom of the build plate. What you can do with ABS and ASA is actually fix that with a lighter or a torch. So what I do is I flip this over and I kind of want to move this back and forth. You obviously don't want to keep this there enough to melt and just kind of rotate it and do your rounds. And since it's ABS and ASA, it's not just going to, uh, you know, deform right away on you. But I'll show you in a second what happens is you're actually getting rid of that white residue and getting that shine back into it. 
And uh, obviously you want to wash glue off first. I'm just doing this for demonstration's sake. I've done this a bunch of times to a bunch of my prints, uh, especially ones where the white just won't come out. And uh, this method works really, really well, especially if you have a torch. So there you go. So as you can see, most of that white texture is now gone and you get your black again. Here, I'll show you again on another piece. Uh, let's see, here we go. Like here's one, you can see it's kind of like matte all over the place. So like I said, you don't want to stay in one spot too long, uh, but this stuff is a lot more resilient to flame, obviously. Uh, but still, keep in mind, this is a plastic part. But yeah, just a little bit all over the place. And you get, you get that shiny, you get that shine back in the plastic. Uh, you know, this carbon fiber one is just matte in general, but it works really well on filament like this. So let me give you another example here. I'm gonna grab some isopropyl alcohol back here and wipe this down just real quick. Just cause this was printed right onto some glue, but I'll wipe it down real quick and it will dissolve, not dissolve, but it will, uh, it will, uh, what's it called? Uh, not catch fire, but here we go. We'll do the same thing. And this is really thin. It's almost paper thin, this stuff. So I'm just going to move it around real quick. There we go. And as you can tell, you get that shine back. It just gives you that little gleam back and that luster uh, back into the plastic without, without deforming it. Obviously don't do this with PLA, it won't work. So save it for your cloudy uh, ASA and ABS prints. There you go, a little pro tip for you. Yep. Yep, yeah, that'll work. Heat gun works too, heat gun does work, yeah. Fire! <laughs> What's the giveaway? It is your chance to win a, a spool of PLA Plus from 3D Max. All right, so I'm gonna put this in here. And let's make uh, some more of these real quick. All right, so let's go. So we got big pulley. Goes on this way. Then we have, which one of these, this guy. I'm gonna get rid of these large spacers that I don't need so I don't get confused. All right, bearing starts. There we go. Tighten this down. All right, then we need the medium spacer. Then we have a pulley and the grub with some of the blue stuff. Whoops, I'll just put it right in the threads. All right, then we have the smallest one and another bearing. And if I did that correctly, this should just drop in here and be perfect. And I think it is. Let's see. That'll be this one. Yep, sweet. 
Okay. That's pretty cool. We got two. All right, let's keep going. Spoolman 3 Max and his trident. <laughs> now nah, the trident stays in the family. <laughs> I like that that's a thing. One day I'll surprise you guys and be like, hey, we finally have a trident to give away. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Speaking of printers, um, I don't know if I'm, I'm still kind of debating whether we should do that a 3D printer auction uh like live to sell some 3d printers it'll obviously help the channel tremendously it'll be fun and you guys get to get uh great machines for a, a pretty low price well i guess if an, in an auction if an auction goes then it goes but uh should technically speaking be able to get them pretty inexpensively All right, all this dropping stuff means I need a, I need another beverage. All right, so let's get this spacer in there like that. Am I missing a spacer? I put the wrong one on. I put the wrong one on. Okay. I knew something was off here. I'm like, wait, I'm supposed to have one of each of these things left. I have two of those left for some reason. Okay, there we go. And this, once again, should just drop right in here. It does, and it should be perfect. It is, all right, sweet. I'm in. <laughs> If a first uh, timer were to dedicate a full-time workload to building a V0 or this, how long would you expect it to take? Uh, full-time? Oh, um, two days, three days? Yeah, like two days without being crazy. Like if you're going full-time, if you're just doing it all day until it's built. Auction is highest bidder. That won't work. Why won't it work? It'll be uh, what I'll do. Here's what I would do. Here was, here's the idea that I had in my in my head. Uh, just like a, a, a automotive auction, just as an example, I would be like, you know, from 9:30 to 9:45, we have printer zero, and uh, anyone in the chat can you know claim the you know or, or bid on it, so to say, right? And at that time at the end, it just goes to whoever that highest bidder was. Uh, that's how that's how I had it in my head, um, and then whatever that price was at the end of that, that's just what it is. Uh, maybe there is a blind way to do it as well, like with some app or some website where uh, the the only thing that happens is at the end of the time, I just announce whoever was the actual highest bidder. Uh, that's like blind, like a blind auction. Uh, that could be interesting as well. I uh, have obviously no experience with that whatsoever. Cool. Last one. I don't know why this would be different, but bam. It's not different. It's the same. And it's looking good. Sweet. That's perfect. What a cool little like piece, you know? All right, we'll see what's next. I don't really know, but probably some belts. Auction raffle would be uh, plus shipping of shipping, of course. What I would do is I would include the shipping price within the United States. And then I guess if you're not in the United States, that's where the problems are gonna arise. Cause the last time I tried to ship something out of, out of the country, it was so much money that it like hurt. Um, 
So we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that works. I'll, I'll think about it. Yeah, it wouldn't be eBay. Uh, you know, I would I would ship them in the same packages as they come to me in. Uh, just people uh, DM uh, their bid. Yeah, maybe. But it could also be done on Discord because uh, there's you know video there, audio there. Uh, that could work much better than eBay. I'm mean, eBay. That could work much better than here. And then it would have to be PayPal because PayPal has both seller and buyer protection and shipping is incorporated and it would be easy. But what, what I would do is, um, uh, what I would do is I would start the prices of each one for the cost of its shipping, which is usually around $36, $38. That's how much it ships to co the cost to ship on average a 3D printer in the United States. So... Uh, that's where it would start and then after anything after that would be just whatever 3d Barrett Jackson. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I bid one dollar on that X plus three <laughs> Nice Put it on eBay during the stream I, I could do that I just don't I, I just really dislike that eBay and PayPal just rob you dry uh, for for their auctions, you know and under three runs like 35 bucks to ship ground. Yeah, exactly. See, it's it's somewhere around there. Between like 30, in my finding, it's like between 38 and 42 dollars to ship. Tree fitting. <laughs> All right, so we did this part. We did the inserts. Z motor pulley. Uh, to continue with the Z drive assembly, attached DC2 16 pulley is shown in each one. Hopefully, I don't run out of flanged motors. Man, oh man. I need those, mo I need those. Oh no. All right, I gotta go digging in the trash. And I really did not go easy on those. Oh boy. Oh, that's, I am so bummed about that. That is not good. That is not good one bit. All right, I got to go trash digging, everybody. Wish me luck. Because they fell all the way in here. And I have, like, food in here. All right, here's one. I see two. All right, we're looking for one more. Where are you? I don't want to move anything too much. Here it is. Okay, that was not bad at all. I am very happy now. <laughs> I was very worried about that. But they are they are dinged up and whatnot from me just destroying them with pliers. Let me grab this and just kind of... Just kind of sand them down a bit. Man, I'm bummed about that. That's not not fun. I don't like it. I don't have my hammer here, do I? No. I need a real hammer. Because these are no longer straight. And the last thing I want is them to rip apart a, a belt Uh, one thing I'm going to check real quick in a second is I might have a bunch of pulleys, actually. Uh, because I have another box full of printer parts from when I took apart all of those Aquilas. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, no, these are different sizes. I do have a ton of wheels. Look. Look how many wheels. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, yeah, these are all the wrong size. All right. Well, it was worth it was worth checking. Any cool in here? Anyone else have just boxes and boxes of 3D printer parts?
the bone yard. Oh, I have, I have a lot of them. I have a, a, a huge bin back there, like a full size Tupperware just filled. Uh, what are you talking about, um, Antoine? The this kit, this kit was sent to me by uh, Formbot. Hey, Kali, how you doing? eBay takes 13.5. Yes, exactly. And then what's interesting is you've used PayPal, right? And PayPal takes a fee. So at the end of the day, it's like a solid like 25, 27% just gone from whatever you were trying to do. So it's it's not good. I have a package of them sitting right next to me. <laughs> Doesn't help. <laughs> I think we're both in the East Coast. I am. Yeah, I'm in Maryland. Basement of parts, right? Send it. How much is the kit from Formbot? Uh, guys, check the link. I don't know. Check the link in, in the in the description. It'll pop the kit right up. Uh, the official link that like, like they sent me. Because uh, I, I don't know off top. I'm just being honest. I have no idea. So what I'll do is I'll pick the flattest uh, part. So as you can see by this side. See that? That's me just mangling it. But this side is still smooth. So... The smooth side, I'm gonna put on the inside that would be touching uh, the belt. And then let's use the vice grip. On eBay, anyone can just claim no transceived or broken. eBay will force you to refund. Oh, anyone can claim it like, you mean like outside of our little auction idea? Can you do uh, really short uh, times on eBay? Because that would be interesting. I don't know. It's just an idea. I'm not even sure if I'll be doing something like that at all. I just thought it'd be kind of fun. And uh, I don't know if anyone's done that before. But what I'll typically do is uh, what 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 will very likely happen is I will just put them up on my Discord in the uh, classifieds for sale section, uh, and I sell stuff in there all the time. Right now I have a a uh, rooted rooted everything's rooted. Uh, I have a Wii in there that's uh, home brewed with a bunch of gains. <clears throat> on sale five sixteen. Yeah, it's 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 quite the quite the piece of kit. Um, it's definitely going to be more expensive than something you will just unbox. That's for sure. But it's on a different level than other machines, and it's completely custom. So that's not something that you can get uh, out of a out of a boxed machine. So take it. Take it for what that's worth. I know that doesn't really mean much to people, especially if you've never done it before. It could be very intimidating. Um, you could also mess things up. Like a Voron is only as good as uh, you tuning it. So if you don't do a good job tuning or you don't want to tune, well, then you're going to have a bad time and uh, a bad Voron. So that's something to consider. What time do we have, by the way? Okay, so there's about 30 minutes left in the stream uh, and about 30 minutes left in the giveaway. So for those that are interested, be sure to check that link in the, in the uh, chat. It's pinned in the top of the chat. I can't put them in the description because it's a giveaway and bots pick it up. So it's in the chat. You have to be here. You have to be in the United States, but you can win yourself a spool of 3D Max PLA+. Plus. All right, I have four of those prepped. Uh, they're not my best. They're not my best work because of what I did to them. Uh, it says, "Do not Loctite at this point." I just put Loctite on everything. <laughs> it's been on the screen the whole time, and same with the Loctite. That's fantastic. Um, we'll determine the precise positioning of these pulleys once the motors are mounted on the printer. For now, we're just putting the pulleys on. Okay, so that's okay. It, the Loctite will still be fine. Uh, but yeah, it would have been better if I actually read. 
but I barely read instructions in the first place, so the fact that I caught that at any given point is a win. <laughs> All right, the soldering iron's cool enough. Let me go ahead and throw that back in here. No controller board, Raspberry Pi, hot end, extruder fans, controller, SSR, DIN rails. Loctite has 3D printing resin now, apparently. Lo oh, does it? That's kind of cool. Uh, I'm gonna put this fresh charged battery uh, in here for soldering later because I will need it to solder some other projects that I have. Where's the lid? There we go. Here's the lid. I don't know about you guys, but I have to keep my place neat. I, uh, I was watching a few live streams the other day of a few content creators. And I, 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 I see their space and like the stuff that they have on the floor and like, uh, I can't do it. I can't keep my space like that. I won't even be able to work. Everything has to be clean. <laughs> Maybe I'm a psychopath. I don't know. Um, all right. Let's take a motor. Let's put this on just lightly. And just give it a little... Nothing crazy so that we can move it. Oh, this one doesn't want to go on there. Oh, there it goes. Oh, yeah, I guess the Loctite will eventually set. But that's okay. It'll be fine. Worse things have happened than will happen. But yeah, I have to I have to keep a clean space, and then what I what I'll do is as soon as I turn the stream off, I clean everything back so it's back to back to square one. <laughs> OCD, yeah, man, it's it's bad, dude. Yeah, it's not it's not just him. There was there was a couple others. I was mind mind blown by the work area. Hey, there's nothing against them, man. If you're if you know if they're high functioning people, obviously they're extremely smart. They do everything well. I just, I can't do it. I just can't, I, I can't even, I can't even focus. <laughs> I try, <laughs> oh shit. Tossers, tossers is a good one. Uh, oh yeah, fans, I'm fans. Belts, I like, I like the belts. Let's get the belts and let's now get ourselves some M3 by 35s. M3 by 35s. Wow, four pop, huh? So that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Sweet. Nice. I'm so excited to put these little things together. 3D print sauce is OCD. <laughs> the red flags that we all ignored. I mean, like, this is gen genuinely asking. Asking for not a friend. Asking for me. Do you think that I should see somebody? Like, that's a genuine question. Because, I don't know. Some people say that it's totally normal. Uh... You know, my, my parents always kept a clean house, you know, and uh, I like to as well. That kind of stuff doesn't always bother me, but something, especially in my work area, really like destroys me in a way where I can't even focus and function if it's not clean or at least uh, tidy to where I know where every single thing is. All right, so we got the belt on there. This pushed on absolutely perfectly. I mean... That looks so good. Very happy with that. All right, so what do we do? Do we tighten these? Add the belt to the pulley. Secure two halves of the Z-Drive with four screws, ensuring the belt is in the correct place. And the screws go in from this side, which is so smart. Of course, the geniuses at Voron
and they'll pull from the back. Right. That's so good. They'll pull from the back, which means they're not just going to pull themselves out. I got to be careful with this Hodo. It is so strong. I don't want anything cracking or snapping. Look at that. Love to see it. Well, I'll give it some time. Love to see it. Look at that. That's perfect. And I'm guessing this is what the front is going to look like. I'll loosen this a bit and just straighten these. So good. All right. All right. I'm happy with that. Let's get these two in here. Okay, super smooth, bearings, spacers. All right, what's next? We just make four of them? Yes, all right, let me make four of them. My wife is OCD as well. We get along, we get along well, but it's not about being clean as much as about able to, yeah, so. Yeah, that's 100% true. It's not necessarily clean. It's uh, tidy, right? That's probably the best best way to put it. Like, uh, I'll notice that I will order things and place things uh, in specific areas or bundles together, uh, and I will feel good about it. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's clean. Uh, like, it's not a germaphobe type of thing. It's different. It's... Uh, it's definitely some kind of like order. Maybe that's not OCD. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's uh, what's it called? Uh, autism. <laughs> like maybe I'm slightly autistic. <laughs> maybe that's why I'm in the art art field. Any doctors in here? <laughs> oh, this one. This one is not going in clean. And I think there might be some plastic in, in here, in this, uh, in here. So I'm going to put it in from this side and let it run through. Yeah, I can feel it. All right, so we'll go back. And now I think I'll be able to go through the, from the correct orientation. Yeah, I have a feeling there was just plastic in there in the way. Let's see. Yep. Insta fit. Yep. All right, another box done. What do we call these, motor boxes? What are these things? I gotta say, this is probably the best print quality that I've ever, ever had on anything. And I know that's like gonna continue to happen as printers just get better and better, but man, uh, this carbon fiber material is almost like just hacks. Like, it just prints so, so well. Z drive, oh, that's boring. <laughs> what do I do for a living? I am a, a web. I own a, a web design firm that I run. I'm a co-owner. Uh, but I've been in the marketing and art side of things for, I guess, since 2005. Graphic design, video, photo. Drone pilot, board game designer. Uh, I wear a lot of hats. Like I was just mentioning, uh, for those German German folks, the first, uh, well, not first, my third board game uh, just came out. I just got delivery of it today. 
Grease Monkey Garage. Fetter Sauceland's Grease Monkey Garage. Um, here's what the game looks like. You manage a auto repair shop. All my board games that I've designed so far are all something from my childhood. And my father back in the day used to own a, um, a repair shop. I kind of grew up in it uh, before we moved to America, of course, in Uzbekistan. So I tried to pull all kinds of those little things into my games uh, so that they're unique. So the theme, even though the theme is Americana, I paid homage to just something from my memories in my past. It's called being an adult. <laughs> nice. You're special. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, Tiger Flyer. Um, what was I going to tell you? Oh, yeah. I was going to show you this stuff. This is the, the, the 3D Max Carbon Fiber ASA. Like I said, this is my second spool of it. Uh, and I just got a third one. And it's so good. It prints it prints like nothing else that I have. Yeah, the carbon fiber ASA. I mean, look at that finish. It's just insane. All right, so there we go. We got the Z drives. Uh, did you print them yourself? No, nothing comes in the kit as far as prints go. You have to print everything yourself. Uh, yourself. And uh, there's quite a lot to print. Uh, so you have to get yourself ready for that. Yeah, like here's here's my most my favorite print. Like look at the look at the finish. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I've never I've never had I've never had prints like that before. I used uh, the Trident uh, for that. Well, the Trident and the V0. So anything that fit on the V0, I used it for. Anything that was a little bit too big, I put on the Trident. Uh, now I have to look up Uzbekistan. <laughs> look at that. I just put I just put it on the map. I think you ejection. Right? That's what I'm saying. Like I like I said, man. I, I've never I've never had prints like that before, and. Uh, this this is you know once i saw that i was getting prints like this I, I i had to get i had to get more of this stuff it's just it just prints like crazy yeah like what other i mean like everything like here just it's just the handle but it looks like it looks like injection molded plastic Yeah, Voron, Vor, all the only part, all the parts on here are uh, printed via Vorons. Whoa! Oh, there it goes. It wasn't uh, focusing. Uh, we got about fifteen minutes. On what? Yeah, yeah, try it. Yep. Balls, balls, D-drive, D-drive. Ah, thank you. That was, I was getting distracted. <laughs> uh, no, Borat was from Kazakhstan, which is a neighboring country, and he constantly made fun of Uzbekistan uh, throughout the, all of his shows. Even, even Ali G, uh, he made fun of Uzbekistan. Uh, that's a good question. I have taken them all off the market. Um, except for this one, obviously. So this game was published by Board Game Circus. Um, so if you go to boardgamecircus.com, they're in Germany, and this is a German game. Like it's everything is in Germany. I mean, in in German. Uh, we're trying to publish it, or we're trying to find a publisher that that's willing to take it uh, to publish it in the United States. Obviously, it's an Americana board board game, so that's that's important. Um, but yeah, as of right now, it is published in Germany, and we're trying to get it to the United States. Uh, the other two games, uh, Battle of the Rock and uh, Dice Bazaar, 
Uh, those games are currently not for sale anywhere. Uh, I used to have them on Amazon. That was very expensive. I made no money from that whatsoever. Uh, I think in some cases it even cost me money. Um, and then I also had them on our website, but people bought them so rarely that it's just not worth it for the trouble at the time, at least. Maybe because of this game. Uh, we'll see where it goes, but I, it just wasn't worth it at the time. Uh, so I pulled them all. M3 by 8. Ali G show was amazing. Yeah, I heard he was going to potentially bring that back at some point. <laughs> Nine. Yeah, the garage one is out. Uh, in uh, So if you look up the publisher... Um, board game circus uh, you will find the game there all right so we got some uh, best use of the wires to the Z facing down towards the inside of the printer this way right these are gonna be mounted onto the top so that has to be facing up okay here I'll face them all this way so that I don't get that wrong. So it looks like we're doing this. And three by eights. Okay, let's do it. I'm actually surprised there's no washers. Seems like something that would, that would be better with washers, but I guess it's because there's, there's three bolts, you no longer need washers. I'm already bad at English. Ain't no way I'm learning to speak German. Well, so Gryfang, so here's the thing. I, I, when I was designing the game, keep in mind, like I said, this has been eight years in the making of this thing. Uh, one of the things that I really wanted to do was make the game language independent. That was when I was trying to publish the game myself. That was one of my goals. And uh, in 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 uh, Dice Bazaar, my other game. Uh, I, I also made that language independent. So the only thing that you needed was the instructions. And it came in English, but then you could get the multi-language instructions in, uh, you know, in a PDF form uh, type of deal. Um, but uh, when the publisher took it, they made these event cards. So the game is completely language independent, except for the instructions and these event cards. And uh, my goal right now is to print the event cards, obviously not myself print, but print them like professionally print them uh, in English so that I can include them for English speaking reviewers. Uh, just like anyone would send out a 3D printer to a reviewer, uh, we're gonna do the same thing with the board game. Uh, so we're gonna send it out to a few reviewers to see how they like it and then also to a few publishers uh, in the United States that will hopefully like it enough to print their own versions of it. Um, and, you know, I've been doing the art on there for so long. I have so many different variations of everything. Uh, I have my own covers as well. Uh, just tons and tons of stuff uh, for so long, for so many years. Uh, one of the cool things was, though, um, when Board Game Circus picked this game up, they, they did a lot of, like, math. And Germans are really good at it, really good at that kind of stuff for board games. Because um, I've really focused on the theme really heavily. I wanted like it to feel a certain way, and they wanted it to work through math. And it, both of those combinations together actually made actually made it so much better. Because <laughs> what it did was uh, it made the edge cases stronger, which is pretty cool. Well, Wheaton, yeah, right. Wouldn't that, it would be really cool, but. Uh, looks like Dice Bazaar is available on eBay, is it? <laughs> Who would be selling it on eBay? Ah, ah. 
Ah! It is, look at that. $32. $30. Interesting. Is this... Who has these even? Bolas Trading. Four available. Okay. So, I mean, these were distributed uh, at some point. Oh, Watts Games. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Watts Games... Oh, no, they're just saying that because it says Watts Games on the back. Watts Games was who printed uh, who printed the, the, the game for me. Yeah, this was self-published. Yeah, this is just one one open copy, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, I still have a ton of these. Like, technically speaking, I should put them up somewhere so I can sell them. Uh, but at the moment, yeah, at the moment, you can't you can't get them anywhere except for here. Uh, what about Battle of the Rock? But these are definitely not for me. This is from other people. There we go. You can get Battle of the Rock occasionally here too. Oh, look at that. A bunch of people are selling. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of these. I donated so many. We actually threw away probably hundreds of them at this point. They're from 2015. It's very hard to sell them. Cool. So yeah, you can find my games occasionally here and there. Apparently eBay. eBay is the place. All right, we got about 10 minutes left in the giveaway. Uh, guys, if you're interested in winning a spool of filament and you're in the United States, definitely jump in on that. It's pinned in the top comment. Our game's hard to self-publish. Uh, oh yeah, it's it's brutal. Uh, the first, so I, I did Kickstarter for both of them, for both Dice Bazaar and uh, and Battle of the Rock. It was it was uh, it was an interesting experience. Uh, Battle of the Rock. I printed too many. Uh, it was my first game. Um, I didn't know what I was doing, and I printed too many. I printed two thousand copies. That's an obnoxious amount of board games to print for somebody whose first game doesn't have a name. In board gaming, the name of the designer carries the game. Uh, even if it's a mediocre game, if it's made by a designer that has other titles that have been popular or like vetted, uh, that title can just, you know, it'll sell. Uh, sometimes even pre-sell just based on the name of the person. That has a lot to do with it. So for somebody that's never done it before, uh, I did a Kickstarter, failed. Then I did another Kickstarter, it made it. So we made the game and I printed too many. Uh, so I was never able to sell them all. And that game actually cost me money. Uh, to just produce uh, Maybe not in the long run after a bunch of years, but in 2015 2016 it cost me money and uh, I rapid-fired another game dice bazaar, which was a complete departure from Dirac or battle of Dirac It was a family game dice game language independent lightweight kind of based on Yahtzee in a way But there's a, a market of goods and you roll dice and the dice in different piles are the price for the good so if you wanted to get the certain good you roll your own dice and that's your kind of like money pool and you can set them aside and if you have enough you can buy that good you take the card and you put it in front of you and they're worth different points um so that game actually ended up taking us out of the gutter uh for for battle of the rock uh and that game i only have maybe a hundred copies maybe a little bit less left in total uh, out of a thousand so that was kind of cool that game made some money well very little but in the general scheme of things but this one should be very different so for this one i thought self-publishing didn't really work out uh how about i get some you know i get an actual publisher to do it so i went to three different publishers uh two of them wanted to change the game dramatically and they did uh through the years and these guys just wanted to support me and to support the game and figure the game out and the core and the math and that's why i went with board game circus Would you see the? Would you say the K1C and the new Chitty is better, uh, or even maybe the Chitty 3 Plus? Oh, uh, I am gonna say that the new Chitty Tech machine, the Q1 Pro, is probably better. Uh, I think it is more ready for an AMS system, uh, and uh, I don't know. I think it's better. Uh, it is way more hands off. Um, Ah, oh, man, they're so close, though. That's the problem. Like, all of them are close now. I do like the look and the build quality of the K1C. 
it's better than the plastic of the Chitty Tech. And like the doors glass on the K1, on the K1C, so that part is better. Uh, the print quality is slightly better on the Q1 Pro. The speeds are the same. The speeds are exactly the same. Uh, the Q1 Pro has a slightly bigger print area, 250, 250, 250 versus 220, 220, so that's a thing. Ah, uh, man, I don't know. So here's why I would pick the Q1. It has a heater. The heater means that you can print anything. Um, so I think just for that alone, I would go with the Q1. So if you're gonna do it, use my link, please. I've now entered the giveaway 45 times. I'm still innocent. Entered zero times. Wow, well that's, that's an interesting glitch. Let me see what it thinks on my side. There's six minutes left, by the way. Uh, it thinks there's 44 entries left. So you're, I think you're in the clear. <laughs> I just ordered my K1 Maximus fetter. Been watching your rooting video. Yeah, the K1 Max is a different animal. The K1 Max is just a workhorse. I've put so many hours on the K1 Max. Uh, might even be my one of my most worked, one of my most printed machines. Um, yeah, I, I definitely like that one. All right, M3 by eights again. And these are going, oh, with that screw downward, interesting. So these we can set aside. Let's get these out in front. And uh, let's put them in the same orientation this way with the three. All right, so they go like this and we can put them, uh, what? Oh, like that? Wait a minute. Well, this way. Why am I blanking out here? Like this. Wait, what's not lining up here? There we go, this one works. Yeah, this one works, okay, that's like that. Uh, this one goes here? Why do those look different than mine, or do they not? Okay, that's, that's that one. All right, I think I'm getting it. Here we go, this one goes like that. I'm also trying not to drop that that piece in there. That goes like that. Okay, okay, okay. There we go. All right, I'm three by eights. Let's do this. <laughs> Bobby Hill. <laughs> Still doubt your innocence. <laughs> nice. Have you done anything with your V3? Uh, no, I've printed a few things with it, but I haven't like done anything. Uh, I did have plans to make another video with some firmware stuff, uh, but I just I haven't had a chance. Like I said, it's like I have these these projects. Obviously, printing building printers is one of my favorites, but the little kind of like breaks I've taken, like mental breaks to do the console stuff, like the um, you know the Game Boy stuff. That has really helped me, I think, just mentally, like just to be in a good place for the channel uh, in terms of like burnout. You know, I'm doing so much of the same thing over and over again. Uh, it's definitely nice to do a, like a refreshing, totally new thing. Uh, and I think I'll, I'll, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep doing that type of thing. So I can't I can't just just because I'm just a normal dude, right? This isn't my job. Uh, just a hobby um, so because of that I do have to kind of keep it uh, moving along so I can't just always a hundred percent do like informative 3d printer videos I just can't I'm not him 
Uh, do you have an affiliate link for the K1C? I, I do, uh, sir. Um, if you search on my channel for K1C or Creality, uh, whoops, you'll find my affiliate link. In fact, I did a unboxing of the K1C and that definitely has an affiliate link in it. Uh, I would I would really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Any any of those purchases at all through the affiliate links help a lot. Um, I know there's a lot of discussion going around like about people shilling 3D printers and just companies in general just to make a buck. I do try to generally avoid that. But I think it's unavoidable on, on YouTube. Uh, one of the things about being on YouTube is trying to make money. So it's unavoidable to some degree. You know, I just try to be honest. Just try to be honest. That's pretty much the only thing I can really do. To try to avoid the whole, oh, he's a shill type of thing. People call me a shill anyway. All the time. <laughs> Can't win them all. I'm not even gonna attempt to. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to win them all. Cool. What a cool little assembly of things. I think we might go overboard uh, over time a little bit. Oh man, there's like a minute left, guys. Um, 15 seconds, if anyone wants to jump in there, it's 44 of you. 10 seconds left. I see that airplane is still in one piece. <laughs> uh, I don't know when the main voyage is because all the places that I fly are pretty much schools. Well, not where I fly, where I would fly an airplane. But they're all schools and they are still all in school. So it's tough for me to just go because the fields are always, you know, completely filled with, with kids with sports. Um, so yeah, uh, though I still have uh, one thing left is right now the throws are really extreme. I have to find a way to chill the throws out, throw throws, are, and I don't know how to do it. I've done every other setting on there. Uh, I've done, I've set the expo. Uh, everything is ready except for how far the throws are on the servos. Uh, and then I'll be ready. Bamboo show when? Probably when I open it. I don't know. You know, I, 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 I'm well aware that it's going to be an amazing machine. Um, and that is why no matter what people, no matter what machine that I post anywhere, people are like, Hey, how does this compare to the bamboo? Like this, that's just what, where the conversation goes. So I obviously would, you know, can't wait. I'm like really excited to, to have that, to be able to be like, Oh, Here's the actual reason, you know? If that makes me a shill, well. <laughs> That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Like make like a meme account. Ah, uh, the weekends, yeah. Yeah, that, that, no, see here, the weekends, all those places that I fly are, are packed, except for the summer. In the summer, they're empty. There's no one there except for those wasps or bees, the ground bees that attacked me last time, the hornets. Nice. <laughs> That's funny. I'm going to laugh at the bamboo fails, right? That, that, like... Which bamboo is it? I, I got two. I have uh, the Bamboo Lab X1 series combo and the Bamboo Lab A1 mini combo. So the combo just means it has one set of a AMS. But I can't get to it until I get the King Rune KLP1 out and the Infimec, Infimec? Infimec TX. I have to do those first. So those will be live streams. And, uh, you know, I'm doing this one, so the next one is going to be an unboxing, whatever next live stream is. All right, our uh, filament is over. Uh, filament giveaway is over, but as you guys know, uh, I like to have something done. So let me see what it takes to get there. Okay, it's not that far. So let me mount up these motors, and then we're going to do our giveaway. So let us let me get these things on there as soon as I can. And then the Aina Tiger, man... 
I so want to do it. You know what I'm going to do? Here's what I'm going to do right now. And this will help me. This will help me get it on to the schedule. I'm going to get it and I'm going to put it over there. Yep, that's happening. We're putting it over there. With the logo out. And more importantly, more importantly, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, now we'll get to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lauren, it's two years, about two years. Logo's out, he's serious. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Zoomy, chill. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's funny. Okay, hold on. Let me get these things on there. Uh, what do I need? M5 by... M5 by 16. Where are those bad boys? M5 by 16. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Uh, this is going to need which Allen key? This one. All right, so all this little thing is that we just put on is just a foot adapter, essentially, which is just nuts at the engineering level of this piece. What a ridiculous assembly. Like, the foot could have just gone into an extrusion into a single nut, but no, it goes into a bracket that's like, a ridiculous piece that goes onto a Z motor assembly. Gotta love it. Gotta love what 3D printing has enabled us to do. <laughs> All right, look at these little beauties. Really cool. Okay, and then we have to put them on there. Preload position, Z motor, take note of the eight preloaded nuts in the slot. What are you talking about? Uh, for, oh, oh, right, okay. On the on the frame. Uh, all right, so let's flip it over. Does it matter which way? Yeah, I guess it does. All right, let's do it this way. Putting it on the back. This should be the front, I think. Using two m 3 by 8s attach the motor. This is when you will tension the 188 tooth belt loop. All right, so M3x8s again. Good thing I closed them. Who won? Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick as soon as I have these on here. So let me just mount them on, and we'll pick the winner. Uh, how else am I gonna need them? All oh, right here, M3. Oh, so they they get mounted on the corners first. Okay, good to know. Uh, I'm trying to hurry, by the way. M340. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's kind of interesting how they, they mount. That's, uh, seems very simple. Wait, there's three. Uh, wait a minute. There's none here. There's four over here. Now I'm now I'm genuinely confused. Well, that's the top. That part doesn't matter. Hey, this is our song. Drive mount. If you install the printed Indian nut holder, this is when you will use that to secure the drive housing. What? All right, this is the front. So as far as I understand, this one, 
will go here. Nope. Hold on, I will I will understand this in a second. Goes down here. Aha, okay. All oh, right, camera. Okay. This is the front of the machine, which means this one is going to go like that. Which also means, wow, there's so many of these preloaded nuts. It's nuts. Ha <laughs> um, Okay, I see. So it's just two. These guys. All right, I'm going to have to flip it over this way to be able to put them on. And I'm going to rotate it so that the front is towards me. All right, we'll have to do it this way. All right, guys, almost, almost there. Let me just get this, get this going, and we will do the giveaway. But I have to have this done for me to be able to give something away. It would be an incomplete stream otherwise. All right, move all that to the center. That leaves this guy. This one goes here. Yep. All right. We got it. We got it. And this goes here. You guys see those? Let me get the glare out of from that machine. There we go. Here we go. Uh, all right. So now we got this guy. What is this? This is gonna need the hodo, isn't it? Oh, uh, you have to leave a nut in between the Z drive and the motor to put the skirts later. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. All right, so I need two down here. I wish there was a better way to align these things. I guess I can do this inside one first. So let's drop that in there. Oh, actually, it'll be somewhat easy to see. Okay, I didn't realize they'll protrude out of here like that. All right, there's one. Uh, I can't use that. It's too thick. All right, this one we missed. So let's fix that first. Yep, got it this time and got it this time. Also, did I? There we go, okay. Got it this time. As I've already said once before. Nope, nope. All right, let's tighten it down. One. Two, okay. All right, now that I know how that works, that's gonna go a little bit faster now. So bear with me. Let's get the two over there. All right, so if I pry it up just a bit, yeah, this will make it easier. Let's see. All right, got this one. No, I just need this one and uh, 
I get it, got that one. And got it, okay. Titan and Titan. Cool, 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 cool. Good, good. Good and good. All right, I'm gonna rotate this whole thing just so it's easier to get to me. And we got motors and we're done. I hate vase mode prints. Do you? They're good for something. There's a couple cool things with vase mode. Oh, some good old funk. This is a new uh, subgenre of electronic music called funk that got popular via like TikTok. Oh, I missed that one. Come on. Oh, I missed it again. Why can't I get it? Come on. All right, now I got it, I think. Let's see. No. Why can't I get This one. Well, that's weird. Is this a bad. Oh, yeah, look at that. That one's like defective a bit. That M3x40 has like a cone shape at the tip. So it'll be fine for something that has to like go through, but not. It won't have enough bite. Yep, that one caught right away. And so did that one. Okay, good. Got those in there. Very nice. All right, last one. And then the motors go on. And it seems like when you get one of them, the other one might just miss, which is kind of interesting. It like pushes the other nut out of the way and it no longer bites like that. Like one one gets, uh, gets in the threads where the other one just does not want to. Why you do that to me? It's mostly this inside one. Like that's good. But then this one just doesn't reach. Does this one have the same problem? Let's just try another one. Come on. Come on, just go in there, nuts, because you're delaying the stream. There we go. All right, that one's in, and this one is in. Okay, there we go. Those are all mounted up. Is it true that the K1C still has a lot of VFAs? It has some, but, but it's very little. You need to just go faster. Uh, what ends up happening is it, it tries to print it pretty slow and, and really conservative in the, uh, and I've tested this. So it'll try to go like 150 mils or 200 mils. If you set it to like 400 or 450, it, the VFAs go away. <laughs> it doesn't like to print slow.
but uh, the K1C has less by far. A canoe shape at the tip. <laughs> Yes, uh, I am. I am, Zumi. Hold on, I'm. I'm almost there. I want. I want to. I want to have a completed stream. I said that this was the last frame uh, thing that I was doing. That's what I want to do. Uh, please be patient, and then you will uh, have a chance to win your free filament. Uh, it is within minutes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That should be enough. Let's make sure I have the right Allen key. Okay, so you're saying one in between. Does it say that anywhere in here? Uh, before taking, before installing the Z motor, take note of the eight preloaded nuts in the slot, which are which we are mounting them. Four of these nuts will be used to mount the Z motors. The position of the remaining four nuts is crucial to finishing the assembly. When you have the motors mounted, you'll want one nut between each of the between each motor and its Z drive, and two nuts in the center. Okay, that's what you were mentioning. I got gotcha. you. So one between, then two to mount the motors, two to mount the motors, and two in the center. Perfect. So this one will go here like that oh it looks like i have to put the nuts in there first i mean the the, the screws in there first chamona there we go that's one ah dropped it dropped it it's gone forever it's it's gone forever i heard it hit the foam did it go in the foam all right no time to waste we're just going for another one my supporters are patiently waiting for me come on get in there hey truggy <laughs> all right let's see how this works uh do you guys want to see this as well i'm assuming you do i'm thinking maybe we do this and spin this like that so that you guys can do this with me all right one in between this one and this one Okay, and okay, I'm gonna do this lightly for now because then this, this, uh, did I do this wrong? I put the wrong one on there, didn't I? I did, I put the wrong one on there, God. All right, now I'm just rushing and making mistakes, which is a bummer. Put that to the side. That one goes on the far side. This one goes here. Yeah, because otherwise the belt interferes. There we go. So this, if I loosen it, should slide and this should also slide put this upward so let's get the tension right first and then we'll do the actual pulley all right there's the tension and then getting this right It looks like it's going to be pretty much against the motor, which it can't be. So I'm going to push it just the hair out. 
like just literally a hair. So if I tighten that, let's see. Yeah, that's where it's gonna be. And I'm supposed to get, how am I gonna get this? Oh gosh, is this another mistake that I made? I think they said inside, like the 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 motor has to. Ah. All right, all right. Here's the deal, guys. I'm gonna get two of these where they go, and then I'll do the giveaway, and then I'm gonna do the rest to finish the stream. Okay. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll do you guys a solid. I'm just gonna do one, and we'll do we'll do the giveaway. I know you guys are waiting. Some of you guys are gonna leave. I get it, it's all good. Uh, and then I'll finish it anyway, because there's no way I'm gonna be able to leave this like this. Uh, it has to be turned this way. I misunderstood, misunderstood what that said. Yeah, it said to the inside, I thought like inside of the machine that way, but no, it has to be this way because you wouldn't be able to reach down there otherwise. All right, there we go. Let's tension this one more time, just a bit more. All right, that's better. And we're good. We're good on that. There we go. Our first Z motor. All right, I'll keep my promise. These, the, I will finish these in a second. Let's do our giveaway. All right. I put mine intentionally the way you originally had it. Really? Uh, Jack, should I do it that other way? It's harder to plug in, but I guess you only plug it in one time. What do you think? Um, I guess it would be easier to manage this way, but the other way is cleaner. What do you guys think? <laughs> Better's giving me the bamboo. Hey, maybe. If I were to print something that would stay in an enclosed 3D printer without a heater, can I use PTG? Nah, PTG won't cut it for that type of thing. It'll have to be ABS or ASA. It's cleaner after, twice the prize. Twice the prize for the weight. Nah, I wish, but I can't. It's not, the prize isn't up to me. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Give me, <laughs> nice. I like the inside jokes. All right, let's do this. 44 people entered. Let's see which one is the winner. Uh, I'm going to go to my other screen as per usual. All right, so we're going to go to winners. I'm going to draw a winner. Uh, one winner, please. Let's hit draw. And let's see. Did you answer? The Man, I feel like this is such a repetitive thing. I even put it in the instructions. Uh, you have to answer uh, the actual question. Uh, I'm going to repick. All right, I see the answer. Are you in the, in the United States? Yes. I'm going to announce. Nice. I think we have a repeat. Jeffrey M. Jeff, the real MVP. I haven't seen you in here for a minute. Did I? Oh, you're right here. You're going to DM me a pic. Uh, congratulations, sir. I knew you were going to say that. I was waiting for you literally to say that. Um, I sent you the last one, right? I sent you the last one, and I remember I had to talk you into it. Um, you're, look at this, by the way, look at this, you're number, uh, you're lucky number 13. Jeff, it's up to you. Uh, I will, I will let you make the call. Um, like I said, man, to be honest, I'd rather you have it, but it's cool, I understand. Uh, if you want me to re-roll it. Um, 
while you do that, the answer was tool changer color print. Um, the question was, tell me something you look forward to in regards to 3D printing. That was the question. Uh, and now I clicked on something and now I got to get back to the competition. Uh, where is it? It's this one. Winners. Nah, Jeff, listen. You support me like crazy, man. You're in here. You were signed up. You're 13. Uh, you were in here till the end, like I, you know, I suggest, and and you won it. So Jeff, listen, to the man, this rolls for you. You won it fair and square. Uh, you know, you you already know you already know the deal. Uh, find a 3D, you know, go to 3D Max website. Uh, find yourself a PLA Plus that you like that's in stock, and shoot me an email with your uh, full name, your address, and your choice of in stock fi filament, and you get it, man. You deserve it. I, I don't want to pick another one. Um, like I said, I, I don't mind repeats because you guys are in here literally supporting me uh, day in, day out. So you deserve to be in the pool if you signed up and you're here, you followed all the rules. Uh, as you guys see, every time I pick one, uh, there's usually the first one or the first second or the second one uh, doesn't have, uh, you know, the answer filled in or they're not in the United States. So you're following the question and you're good to go. I'm about to fall asleep. Uh, me too. <laughs> awesome. GG. The innocent guy that didn't even get on the list. That's right. 3D Max is having an Easter sale. Uh, they usually do. They usually do. You can always get 5% off with 3D Print SOS, but they usually go to 10% for the holidays. We have to answer the question and be in the US. Yes. That's it. And, and you have to be present to say, yes, I won. You should have a picture in the Discord. Let's check. Okay, I see. Yeah, so you, you have it this way. Uh, well, on some of them. What, do you have it going clockwise? You have it going counterclockwise. So it looks like there's plenty of room to go this way. I'll just leave it like this, it's okay. I guess it would be better with them facing down, but that's okay. I'll leave them, I'll leave them the way it is. Thank you, sir. Ah, uh, yeah, that is true. How do you select that you're in the US? Uh, I don't know how you guys do it from your end, but on my end, I get to see the email address and your location. Uh, no, Canada does not count, unfortunately. They only ship to the US. And yes, thank you, Caleb. Uh, please like the video before you leave. It's from your IP address? Yeah, probably. Your ISP gives it to you. <laughs> yeah, that probably doesn't work. I wonder, actually, I wonder if that's happened. Yes, that's, this is correct. Uh, 3D, it was 3D Max's rule that it has to be within the US. <laughs> Zoomy. All right, let's, uh, let's finish up. Uh, you know, if you guys got to leave, I, I totally understand. It is really late. It's 1232. Uh, I'm sorry it took that long. Um, but I'm going to continue. I want to get all four of these motors done so that this portion of the build is complete. Uh, more than welcome to stay and keep me company. Uh, but if you leave, uh, you know, say bye on the way out. And if I see it on the in the chat, I will, I will also uh, say bye to you. And yes, please, if you could, on your way out, like the stream. It does help a lot. Mostly in the beginning, but that's okay. 
I'm here for at least another 30. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> so another giveaway to allow Canada. Uh, not tonight. That's true. Yeah, a lot less wires, huh? All right. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the support. I appreciate you guys. Need an FPV drone tutorial? Uh, pretty much everything that you'd want to learn, you should probably learn from Bardwell. Uh, he's very good at what he does as far as teaching uh, people stuff about drones. Uh, but I can answer some questions. Um, obviously, I I do a whole lot of drone uh, related things just in general whether it's personal or work stuff. So I, and I've built quite a bit of drones and I fly a variety of different styles. So I do know some things, but I'm no drone teacher. All right, this one definitely needs to be loose. And we'll push it all the way in. Yeah, it likes to be all the way in there, but then we kind of just got to slide it just a, literally a hair away from the motor itself. And then it should be good. Right there. Yes. Cool. All right, that's two right there. <laughs> tally one of my buddies loves tally nice i appreciate that Kenneth. thank you uh i did yep uh, i've been using it for uh about two months or so uh i just did a short on it and uh some content here and there that you guys didn't know that 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 printer was you know what i used it for um well yeah it's uh in short it's it's phenomenal i'm working on a video for it uh i'm waiting for a spool of filament to get here from them it should be here on friday uh so that will give me some time to print using that spool uh i would like it to be a part of the of the video uh but yeah very very good very, very good. They killed it. And like killed it in a good way. All right, this is loose. Yes, this one goes over here. We need these two. One. Two. Get this guy over here and these two over here. And I did that over there, yes. What a cool little system this is. All right, let's go all the way in and then back it out just a tad. And we can tighten this up. Sweet. You know what I kind of want to do? I kind of want to put more of these grub screws in there. I don't know if it's necessary, but for some reason, my gut feeling is that these particular pulleys would like two in there. So I'm going to do it. It'll just make me feel better.
Okay. Got some saxophone going on in the background now. chat should I, uh, I should get into FPV all I have is the DJI mini 2SE uh, you know if you are familiar with the with the DJI like system uh, check out the Avada um, in fact there's an Avada 2 that's about to drop at least that's the rumors uh, that thing is gonna be amazing the Avada is truly a game changer in my opinion I know people have like mixed thoughts about it uh, but you know, I fly custom FPV drones all the time. I have a ton of them. I love them. Uh, they're amazing. But at the same time, the Avada can do some of that stuff. It's obviously not never going to be a full on freestyle, like just crazy beast, but the fact that it can do that and then you can hit the brake and just have it hover like without your input is amazing. And yes, you can do that on some drones. Uh, but not like the Avada and that that security blanket, especially with the huge battery packs on there, uh, just means that you can fly over water and like feel secure about it and not like you're gonna drown. Um, there's just all sorts of little things here and there that make the Avada amazing. And it seems like the new one is gonna be even better uh, in pretty much like every way. Uh, quieter, because that's the thing, it is loud. Uh, which also means you'll be able to find them secondhand really easily. Because uh, when, when DJI products drop, as you know, the other DJI products go super cheap. Uh, so that might be worth, uh, you know, looking out for. But yeah, like I had my kid fly it, which is amazing. Like the fact that that's a thing. Uh, I had my, uh, my father fly it like it's it, it's it's truly something special um despite despite the haters and keep in mind most of the haters don't have one And if you're already familiar with uh, the D DJI scene and how they work and you're comfortable with their China stuff, because there's always China stuff, then you should be good. Uh, that picture does not show the power connector facing to the left. That's okay. It, yeah, that, that's fine. I think it shows it pointing down, uh, Martin. Uh, but thank you for trying to point it out. Uh, it, I think it, it has it pointing down, but that's okay. It, there's plenty of room around everywhere to have it this way. Uh, yes, it's releasing for all of them. And the ones that aren't released are like about to be, but most of them are already rooted. Oh no, done. Sorry. Always run nitro cars and helis. I mean, if you run helis, that the helis is a crazy skill. Uh, but yeah, drones are next level. The cool thing about drones is um, you can like stop. I mean, helis do that too. But you can like stop or like bat, like no matter what's happening, you can kind of just get out of it by, by just stopping because you got four props. Uh, and also the control, you can like augment reality almost in its movements. Uh, and you know the FPV aspect of it is just unbelievable. Uh, Anthony, if you if you get something small, small drones have gone so crazy lately. Some of my favorite drones are tiny. Uh, all of them are like way upstairs. They're not right here right now. Uh, but some of my favorite drones are little two inch and two and a half inch drones. So you don't have to get something huge and expensive to be able to have like peak uh, FPV. Uh, quad experience which is amazing nowadays um yeah you know it just depends if you have the funds to go digital uh with the video uh or analog um it's quite quite expensive to go digital but also the quality is so much better that it's it's hard to even compare the two 
I made the mistake of going directly into 250 racing drones. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, that is, no, no, no. That's hard. Really next level hard. What's your opinion on new registration uh, with FAA on drones? Um, I, I mean, I hate most of the aspects of it. But I understand that they need to do something because there's so many stupid people that can buy a drone and fly it in an airport or near an airport, which happened in my state several times, uh, even at stadiums. Like people do really stupid things with drones. So I understand that they have to do something. But just like certain gun laws in the United States, what some of those end up doing is hurting the people that actually care the most and are in the scene the most and do a lot for the scene. It just the uh, just the cookie crumbles sometimes the people that make the rules aren't the directly connected in that way um and that's a bit of a bummer like obviously if i'm flying a tiny whoop in my house uh with my kid i don't want it to to release my personal information about where i am currently live to the world and publicly i think that's ridiculous um uh, so that's why there's that 250 rule and you're not necessarily flying a 250 inside but then again you can fly your 250s or even larger drones indoors uh you know at, at a at a gig at a facility in your own property uh like inside where the faa doesn't control the air uh but yet it's still technically according to the rules has to uh you know have the um the GPS on, I don't know. There's just things I really hate about it, but I understand why it is what it is. Actually, anything flies, right, right. Yeah, but the airplane, that should be, that should be something else. All right, hold on, let's see where we are here. I think this is the last step here. Yeah, the rest is for the Z-axis. Uh, we're not gonna be able to follow this exactly because I have some mods here. But cool, so what's next? The next is the idlers, the bed, okay. From the idlers to the bed, all right. Bed assembly. Oh, and then gantry. Are we going right in the gantry? Why are these pages blank? Whoa. Did this glitch out? Wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. Did my... Did my manual glitch out? What the... Uh... That's all you get? Are you serious? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, I guess this is the same as the 2.4, just miniaturized. Use other manual, what other manual? That's kind of funny though. All right, so the next is idlers, uh, bed, and then gantry. That's kind of random, but I guess if it's, wouldn't you do the, no, the Z motors are here. Wait a minute. If these are on, how do you get the other belts? All oh, right, the other belts are broken. They're not like looped in. I think there's another manual that goes further. Uh, I downloaded this one. Yeah, this one is down. I downloaded it just so that I, I have it on my desktop and I can easily get it. Pay-per-view per page. All right, so it looks like before our next stream, which the next stream is gonna be a printer. Uh, and then we'll come back to this. So before that one, I'll have to find out what the heck's going on, obviously. 
It's fun getting the other belts, but it's doable. <laughs> well, that's exciting. Here, let's um, let me put this away real quick, because uh, that's how my brain apparently is doing this. And then I'll flip that over just so we can kind of see it, you know. <laughs> uh, the manual ending is is kind of kind of funny. That's so Voron. All right. Here we go, let's move this back. Let's see. Oh yeah, and the front is what? The front is here. No rocking at all. Yes. Oh yeah, now it doesn't move. What an overkill mechanic. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> crazy for a printer. The legs have Z drives in them. Wild times. So this is exposed, right? Does that mean... Uh... Oh, the magnet is too shallow. If that part's exposed, we should be able to technically have some dancing ducks. Oh, what's happening here? Something we got some binding going on. What's happening here? Something's binding up. Oh, I see what's going on. That's the motor. Uh, that's the uh, our lovely flange that I bent up, rubbing up against the motor. Cause that's how uh, that's how I roll with the. Poor flanges. There we go. And now it looks like this belt is loose. So let's tension that how it should. There's gotta be a better way to tension this. But I guess they don't really have to be crazy tensioned anyway. There we go. That's nice and smooth. Let's check them all. Now that I know that that's a problem. I'm surprised there isn't some crazy Voron tool uh, to tension these things right here. Some like super specific, slightly overdone All right, let's check it. Yep, that one works. Now I know what to look for. Yeah, I definitely like that all the weight of this machine is on the bottom. That's very nice. Yep, this one's good too, just needs to be tensioned. Nice, and this one, also loose.
It's got to be a better way to do this. It's very uncomfortable. Uh, maybe, maybe this way. Oh yeah, this is easy. Just pull down on it. All right, let's see. Nice. Okay. So it's just that one. Yeah, okay, so you can't, they're just not quite shallow enough, but what if, what if we had an extra? Can we have some dancing ducks? Oh yeah. We can DJ some ducks. <laughs> hey zombie, before you go further, run your Z belt. I had to undo all of that. Um, yes. Well, so hold on. So, so right here, so zombie, is there another manual that I should download? Because it's empty, uh, which this is all fine. I can get this from you know somewhere else. That's not really a problem. Is there anything else that's specific to the machine that I should really know? So you're saying get um, run your Z belts like what into the bottom before the rest is all encapsulated? Uh, does anyone see Maker's Muse video? He ended up with a tease about AMS. Yeah, so the I, I didn't see the video, but the reason why he teased that is because on that machine, there is two uh, filament sensors, one at the tool head and one uh, at the back of the machine, like on the inside. Uh, so, and there's actually like a space that a filament cutter could technically go, uh, but even if they don't do it that way, there's there's implications that the machine should do AMS stuff, uh, but I've asked them a ton of a ton of times throughout this whole process, and they've never they never said that they will indeed have one. So, the belts are impossible to feed into the lower section. That's that's what I'm hearing. Uh, is that the beta guide? Um, it just says mic. Oh, it says work in progress. It says micron manual work in progress. I don't remember where I got it. I think it's just GitHub. Uh, but it was when I first bought the kit. I don't, it's probably, maybe it's out of date. But I did download it and then just threw it into the browser. Uh, Micron plus manual. Documentation. Ah, so there is another one. Uh, wait, this one's five days ago. This one's last year. So let's see what this has. And if it's different than what I'm working with here. I wish we would just load the whole damn thing. Now we're just, now we're just loading. Uh, use the old manual. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't, I've never, I've never even looked at this one. Yeah, I've, I've never even seen this one. I just went with the latest one. Uh, here, I'll just download it. It'll be faster. Uh, where did it go? Oh, right. Chrome downloads to my downloads folder. I put that in my Micron folder. All right, so now we have this one. Uh, actually, let me open it in the browser in the same way. Let's go. Do this. And let's go browser view. Uh huh. Okay. A 
Whoa. Whoa. What is this fun thing? Hinge them out. That's fun. This is, this is just... Th th this thing is just some next level stuff right here. Uh, scrub through my... Yeah, yeah, I, I, I will. I will. And I do. <laughs> what is the holdup with other brands making AMS? Uh, I think it's just the, to try to get them to be reliable. Um, that's That's pretty much it. Like, uh, I think people now expect 3D printers to be as flawless as microwaves and dishwashers are. Um, and, uh, you know, they're not. They require all sorts of maintenance and, uh, you know, constantly tinkering with stuff. But people don't expect that. They expect, you know, to buy a bamboo uh, and everything to just work. And when it has a simple problem, they rage out about it online and return them and cause all kinds of mayhem. So uh, that's why, uh, because AMS is really complicated and hard to implement. And uh, so far, I think there's technically only been one that's been wildly adopted without, you know, without genuinely like doing something hacky. Um, obviously, there's others out there, but I, I think even they won't argue that statement. Ah, man, that's not fun. Yeah, I don't have that either. I'm, I'm not doing the ZN stuff because I'm doing uh, at least at least to get it running with one tool head. I have a boop. Uh, so after after boop is set up, uh, I'll try to make more tool heads. I'd like there to be three at least on this machine. Uh, so we'll see. Um. All right, so basically, I'll just scrub through this and just generally do what I need to do. But it looks like we're just going to put on this de-idlers, and then it's just the straight up the, the gantry. Gantry is next. Which, you know, it's pretty similar to the Trident. Obviously, it's way more similar to the 2.4, but uh, it, it shares some things. And I'm not doing end stops. I'm going to do uh, sensorless. Cool, yeah, I like need this. Like, I need this. I need to know the stacks, you know? Hey, K2 Kev and Pez Liz. You guys all come together? <laughs> that's how I, just so you know, that's how I met all three of you. <laughs> Is I met all three of you kind of like together. <laughs> and to see you all come in in the stream together, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to see y'all. <laughs> Hey, I know you, and I know you. That's right, that's right. Good news, I just swapped boob for tap changer. Hey, printing with it now, nice. Yeah, 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 that's great. Uh, that's also good to know. Yeah, like my, just so you know, like my goal with this build is to get it running with one with boop and minimal wiring. So no sensors, sensorless, you know, get it booped, get it booped. Uh, get it running and then I'm hoping to do tool changer. I think having this little tiny package with three tool heads it would just be epic and uh, You know, there's so many cool printers out there, but this build for specifically I'm just I'm I'm, I'm jazzed. I'm jazzed about it You know uh, I got four hours till it starts again. <laughs> Thank you for a good night. Yeah, uh, thank you for being here. Appreciate the support. <laughs> We're a weird bunch. It's all good. Everyone's weird. I'm weird. <laughs> Hello, I'm weird. <laughs> Zombie, did you send back the K1C? Finding inspiration for a new studio. Uh, that's a, that's a pretty cool compliment. I think. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's a compliment. The studio is a mess right now, but. Here's what we're working with. Uh, projects on the ground. This needs some gloop. Uh, needs a couple more spools of blue. That's not supposed to be there. This mountain of printers is there so that I stay on track and get motivated to get these boxes out because I have OCD and this makes me uncomfortable. 
So I put this all here just so that that I, I come down here and I'm like, this pisses me off and I need to get to this as soon as possible. So that's there. Uh, current project needs to fly very soon. I'm pretending it's flying right now while I'm making noises. Um, yeah, you know, and then what you don't see is piles of other printers that I need to get out of here because I, I just, I can't store them. I'm not a storage facility. Uh, do you have a link for Gloop? I don't have a link for Gloop. I need to make one. Uh, but to be fair, I haven't used it yet. Uh, and as you guys know, I like to use something first, get my hands on it before I can recommend it. I've heard nothing but good things. I love the people there. They seem to be so, so, so nice um, and just are willing to work with everyone, which is amazing. Um, but I haven't used it yet and I will, and I plan on doing a full video on this once it's complete. <clears throat> uh, what is the... DAK, I don't know what that word is, but anything with the word tool changer is dope. <laughs> Pro tip, outline the bodies. I've, I've heard of this. Uh, people have been recommending, <laughs> people have been recommending this. <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, Kev, um, uh, at that event or before the event, I was scanned by Creality. So this is a full body scan of me. I, I, they did it when, when they did Sam, they did me too. So this is a full body scan of me uh, on the using the Creality scanner printed on the K1 Max using Creality filament. So it was supposed to be like a whole thing with all their stuff, but then they didn't send me enough filament uh, and I requested more, but it's been ages now and I just need more to finish it up. It would be nice to support you. Don, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Put it out in front of the door. That's true. Instantaneously. <laughs> I posted a video in the 3D print chat. Nice. Thank you. I'll take a look. I'll take a look in a minute. Pride and Tool Changer mod. What? What? <laughs> ask Sam to show you his edited model. Interesting. I, I have been talking to him. I need to ask. I was just talking to him about his uh, 3D printed bike. I want to do that. I want to do a 3D printed bike. Obviously, if there's ever a race, I won't win. I need to. I need to drop another solid hundred pounds to be able to do that. But still, would be pretty fun. Speaking of Sam, he's always here with me. Look, I put a I put a magnet on his head, uh, so that he's always uh, he's always watching over us. Wexter made some adjustments. <laughs> That's pretty good. I want to see that. How do you say that word? Dash? Like, that's a wild word. Uh, let's check the Discord real quick. Uh, let's see. Ooh. All right. Yeah. That's so cool. So I do plan, maybe this is the wrong plan, but I do plan on using the uh, stealth, micro stealth burner. Uh, I understand the performance gains of not using this, uh, but in my defense, my uh, 02 that I just printed with during this stream, I, I love this thing and it's so well tuned at the moment. Um, I just figured this thing's going to sit next to it over here on the right and uh, it would just be cool to just keep this aesthetic. Um, I know that's like stupid. <laughs> I know that's stupid. Like. That's fine. <laughs> I'm cool with you just being like, dude, that's stupid. And I'll be like, yeah, it is. <laughs> but I would, I would ideally, if it's possible, uh, like to do three of these things. <laughs> but that is really cool. Yeah, Jeff, if you're still in here, you have any videos of yours? Uh, also, whoever posted this, thank you, Nigel. Uh, 
that is that is the little Jeep that I printed. This thing's so cute. It's like the most adorable thing. Um, yeah, it's only two bucks. You know, support the creator. Uh, but it's just, it's so cute. And it prints just beautifully. This was on the uh, on the Chidi Tech Q1 Pro. I, I bought the uh, the trophy truck he just designed too. Uh, use Dragon Burner. Uh, there are docks for it. best tool head. No competition. I I I know, man. I know. I know. There's no competition. Performance wise, I I totally understand. Maybe I can adapt it in some way, shape, or form. It'd be such a bummer to like have to redo all this. <laughs> Dax, Dax requires you to rotate the Z-Rod so there's two on one side and one on the other. Room for, oh, okay. Rear tool docks, interesting. There's not a back plate for the mini. Uh, I can make one. Hey. Good quality on those. Oh, the Q1? Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Really, like super impressive. Uh, you know, out of the box, just crazy performance. Uh, here, like this. This is a out of the box ABS print on it. Just no tuning, no nothing. It's transparent transparent um abs i did a little build on it i did drop it don't worry about the tape i dropped it and it broke one of the studs inside that holds the hardware but otherwise the fact that everything fits so perfectly flawlessly it just you know it's transparent so you can see inside of it but really good really good performance everything that i've printed with it like everyday stuff has been surprisingly good Pick some dude. Yes, he does. He does. Yeah, no, I, I understand. Um, yeah, cooling alone is a thing. But I do, well, I, I'm going to say that I do print a lot of ABS. But, like, with a tool changer, it's probably going to be PLA, right? Message for Brico. Yeah, I'm not very proactive with the messaging. I, I do gotta say, I'm like in my own little world over here. Um, all right, guys, I do love the company. I appreciate you guys coming in here, uh, but I'm quite literally falling asleep. <laughs> it's 1 a.m., 1 10 a.m. I'm at a pretty good place to stop, actually, uh, just to kind of like do a, a small recap here. Yeah. The frame, the frame and the motors. It's so cool. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to get the front skirting on just because it's so, so clean. I mean, look at that. Look at that print. Yeah, gotta love it. So yeah, I'm very excited to get this stuff on there, but um, looks like I need to plan out the tool head a little better, uh, especially because we're getting closer to the build, to the build of that. But I was really, I was really hoping to use these. Like I said, it's, it, the only re main reason is because the V0 prints so damn well, I don't want to touch it. Like everything that I throw at this thing, it just it just crushes at the moment. Um, and maybe it's because I have a giant auxiliary fan in there and uh, you know the, the Nevermore on this side, I don't know. But man, like I'm, I'm bummed, I'm bummed. <laughs> I like you guys. <laughs> uh, no problem, Mr. Walkman. Thank you for being here and uh, the support. Appreciate you. Great to catch you. Great to catch you guys. I need to, I need to be a little bit uh, more proactive to, uh, to kind of catch up with you guys. I know you guys are always streaming, always doing something, always making cool projects, and. Uh, uh, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not like, like I said, I'm not the most social person ever. 
So I, I'll, you know, I like, I walk by head down, if that makes sense. And I'm sure you, you've seen it. <laughs> um, so definitely out of my comfort zone to like reach out, if that makes sense. But I need to, because uh, I, I, you guys are pretty, all pretty cool. I have a dragon burner on my V0. It's great. No side cooling. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that you have dragon burners. <laughs> Just had a quick video on my big tool changer. Nice. I'll check it out in a second. Night pumpkin. <laughs> oh, wow, I haven't been called that in a minute. I'll take it. <laughs> Night, sweetie. <laughs> if I had a show, I'd want you on it? Oh, I don't know about that, man. I guess I appreciate that. Yeah, right. You are on Twitch. I remember you told me that before. I still have your sticker, by the way. And also, my daughter, my daughter wanted to take it. Where did it go? Oh, she did take it. She did take it. Here's my pile right here. I kept it right there. My daughter took it. My daughter came down here. She said, I want the sticker. I'm like, no. And I think she took it because it's not here. There's no reason why I would move it from there without the other stickers. Now I don't want to know where she put it. Hope you're getting money from the 3D Max orders. I get, uh, what do I get, 3%, 5%, 3%, 3% of the sales. Something tiny, but you know, it all helps. And uh, getting 5% off using my coupon helps you guys from the big orders. Cause I see that some of the orders are, are massive. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad to be able to, you know, get some kind of, uh, you know, um, you know, discount over to you guys. So love the space. Uh, is that Wall Stars? Yeah, no, it's, it's Hex. It was before. Can I show you this way? I can also manually move the camera, but it's easier to just do this. Uh, that's not even a good view. Oh, uh, here, we'll do this. There we go. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, yeah, it's just the, just the Hex. All these are printed on the Delta uh, FL Sun. Super Racer, I think, at the time. Now we have a V400, but yeah. So they're actually actually kind of small, but yeah. So I still have a bunch of space to put in tools. My my goal was to get all this crap out of here, and uh, instead I just keep filling <laughs> filling the whole space up with nonsense. <laughs> so yeah, that's a problem. Hey, dollar forty nine. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. <laughs> forty-nine. Don't you usually put a banana? I think every time I've seen you um, in a live stream uh, where, our pa where our paths have crossed, I've seen you put bananas in there. Unless that's just a, just an inside joke with some other streamers. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank you. Had a lot of hex. Dove in a multi-board. It's so good. I, yeah, it looks good. It's just hard to... This is already here. Like, me tearing this down, I just don't want to, you know? But if I was to put a new one up, I'd do that. Yeah. Uh, vice versa as well. Always with the bananas. <laughs> nice. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. I loved catching you guys on here. I appreciate it. Thank you for popping in. Really made the made the rest of the stream. Wait, I see the banana on the, on this side, but not on my side. Wait a minute. That's weird. So in my stream, in my like chat thing, I don't see it, but I, now I look on the YouTube stream and I see the little banana there. All right, now I feel better that there's a banana. <laughs> Reach out if you have questions. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. You get a double, double salute. Have a good night. Thank you for the support. Appreciate you all. Uh, before I, I, I leave, check out shop at 3dprintsos.com. Bunch of things I've been uh, designing and throwing on here. Uh, cool shirts, really cheap prices, the cheapest I can get. Uh, and uh, some cool mats. I use them all the time. They're fantastic work mats. I illustrated a bunch of different hot ends. Uh, super cool mugs. Um, if you want one of these, hot ends mug, check it out. Uh, okay, that's shop at 3dprintsos.com. I pressed every button. I, I'm still pressing buttons. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, and you could look this cool. Imagine being that cool. You can't even do it. I'm going to challenge. Can you even be this cool? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> with that said, I'm out of here. Peace. See y'all. Thank you.